technology so this video comprises of different topics on test ng uh, so in uh, this is the agenda for uh, today or uh, for this particular video which comprises of different topics like introduction to test ng different annotations are uh, available in test ng so we'll learn those annotations assertions and different attributes test ng dot xml which is very important uh, uh, file test ng dot xml so we'll learn what it is and the parameterization using test ng we'll learn parallel testing in test ng and we have cross uh, browser testing as well and uh, in this video we'll learn how to execute failed test cases and listeners in test ng as well and soft assertions in test ng so all the topics i have covered in this particular video i have uh, combined all the videos uh, which i have uh, uh, recorded earlier so in this video in only in this single video you learn different things uh, which covered all the topics comes under test ng so let's get started guys yeah hello friends welcome back to automation testing insider.com so this is the topic for today test ng framework so so far we haven't covered test ng in our script but from now onwards we are going to use test ng in our script so this is the one of the important topics in selenium web driver and uh, this is testing framework and there are different features which we are going to discuss in test ng so from now onwards uh, for next six seven sessions, I am going to talk about different features which are associated with test ng. So this is the agenda for today. So we'll talk about what is test ng, what are the different features of test ng. Uh, we'll see the difference between test ng and J unit. How test ng is uh, better than J unit? Okay, and uh, I'll show you how to install test ng plugin. So test ng is available in the form of jar files so i'll show you how to install using eclipse those jar files and uh, we'll see at last like how to write first test ng program through eclipse okay so what is test ng so test ng is an automation testing framework which is available for java language okay and ng stands for next generation okay here we have test ng so ng stands for next generation it's java unit testing framework and uh, test ng is an advanced framework advanced framework designed in a way to leverage the benefits for both developers and testers okay so this is really helpful for developers for unit testing and uh, for automation we are going to use as testing framework so this is really helpful for testers as well and uh, yeah so what are the different features available in test ng so test ng simplifies the way tests are coded okay so it simplifies the scripting and uh, which will be more in readable format there is no more needed uh, there is no more need for a static main method in our test so main method is no no more required so that simplifies okay test engine simplifies the code so we no more need of uh, main method so directly we can execute our script without main method support for annotations so we, this is the symbol of annotation at the rate so we are going to use different annotations in our script so annotations are uh, are i mean we can say it provides more information to the methods or you can say metadata it provides metadata or more information to the script okay so we'll talk about different annotations which are available in test ng using test ng you can generate a proper report and can see past failed skip test results so it generates very beautiful HTML reports. Okay, so that we can see there like what are the what are the different I mean uh, we can see past fail skip test results. 
we can prioritize our test cases okay we can give priority to our test cases support for data driven testing using data providers so we are going to use another annotation data providers so using that we can provide uh, we can perform data driven testing uh, which is nothing but parameterization of uh, data okay parameterization we can say and multiple test cases can be grouped more easily by converting them into text ng xml file so going forward uh, going forward we'll discuss about test ng xml file like what wh what is text ng xml file and how to create it the same test cases can be executed multiple times without loops just by using keyword call invocation count so this is one of the features we'll discuss we'll talk about cross browser testing okay in coming days so this is one of the features cross browser testing like we can execute our test cases in different browsers like ie browser chrome browser firefox okay and parallel testing is possible using test ng so we can execute our test cases at the same time in different browsers so advantages of test ng over j unit so there are three major advantages of test ng over, over uh, j unit so we have more annotations available in test ng than j unit and annotations are easier to understand okay we have very simple annotations in test ng test cases can be grouped more easily parallel testing is possible as i have discussed the testing framework can be easily integrated with look with tools like maven jenkins so maven is build tool we'll discuss after test ng what is maven and uh, jenkins that is ci integration tool so it is easy to integrate uh, with these tools okay and i'll show you how to install the plugins and these are the different annotations so uh, we'll talk about these annotations in detail in the next video and these are the topics which i have listed down roughly like uh, what are the different features and uh, what are the different topics we can cover so we'll uh, today we have discussed about introduction installing of test ng plugin i'll show you We'll write our first first test case different annotations we'll discuss from our next video onwards uh, we'll create test ng xml file there i'll show you test suite groups we can divide our uh, test cases into groups we can prioritize our test cases so we can give the sequence proper sequence yeah and on depends on is there uh, we'll talk about reports. We'll see the reports, logging features, and assertion. Till now, we haven't used assertion, okay, and uh, validation. I would say. So we are going to use in test ng. We'll talk about parameters. How to pass parameters from test ng XML file and data providers for data-driven testing. Okay. So these are the different features I have listed down. We'll discuss about them one by one going forward now let me just uh, show you like how to install test ng plugin so my eclipse is already open here so if you go to window sorry help and here we have install new new software so here i have link couple of links so this is the old link this is not working right now let me just try So how to do that? First of all, you have to go to help and uh, install new software. So there is a button add. So just click on that. Here you can give test ng and location. You can provide the URL and just try it, uh, click on add. And we have to select that yeah this test ng from here and here you can see 
here we are getting some errors so let's click on ok so you can see could not find http this website right so let me manually try to uh, fire this url this is the old url which is not working right now so here you can see gone the requested resource is no longer available in this server so plugins are not available the jar files so what we'll do i found another url this url so we'll try this one i think this should work so here we'll add test ng and i'll put the url here click on add now here you can see we got test ng okay now i'll click on next so we have to check all simply you have to check on uh, click on check this checkbox test ng and we have to install these plugins and we need to simply click on next so it is installing the dependencies and plugins so here you can see again we have to click on next and this is the license we have to select i accept the terms of license agreement i accept so this is apache license test ng available in apache so just click on finish and uh, yeah this is warning so we can click on install anyway some security warning so no need to worry about that so we need to just click on so it is installing software you can see 83 percent now we can restart our eclipse so just click on restart so it is getting restarted So Eclipse is launched here we can uh, now how to check whether uh, it is installed properly or not so again we can go to install new software and here we have what is already installed one link is there just click on that so here you can see test ng is installed properly okay let's close on close this now we'll create new project java project only let's say select java project next project name test ng framework click on finish java perspective so it will open the java perspective yeah so our project is created so what i'll do let me just configure our uh, selenium java jar file so right click on project and uh, build path we have configure build path so we have jre system library which is by default there right so we have to add selenium java jar files all these jar files and add external jars again and outside of lives folder apply apply and close now let's add test ng library as well okay 
so again right click build path configure build path here we have add library so just click on that here you'll see test ng is available now before installing test ng it won't available so right now test ng is installed so we have to add test ng libraries so just click on next finish here you can see libraries getting added got added here and these are the four jar files of test ng okay so we need to just click on apply apply and close so here you can see it is added in the project okay now let me just create a new project inside src folder new package in fact okay so i'll give com dot test test ng package and here i'll create new class now sample test ng program and no need to select public static void main now so we can click finish yeah here we go it is created now next session i'll talk about different annotations are which are available in test ng but for now i'll use only couple of annotations few annotations only so let's say one second i'm going to use we have different annotations you can see so i'll use before test okay and each annotation is associated with method so here we have to write public void let's say before test annotation or i'll give proper name like uh, let's say launch browser browser okay and uh, this is before test so this uh, annotation this method will be executed before the start of a start of our test test method and we have another annotation after test so i'll add i'll create another method public void close browser and i'll declare web driver here web driver driver we have to import web driver from org.openq.selenium so here you can see automatically before test uh, these uh, import statements are included org.testng annotations dot after test and before test this is not required by mistakenly it got added so that is not required here in close browser we can simply write driver dot close right now let me just simply copy few lines of code from previous project so we have covered one second let bets in the last session so simply i'll copy these few lines of code to launch the browser you can give any name like launch browser or let's say setup method setup setup method okay setup and i'll add one
so to write the test cases we have at the red test annotation so here we'll create public void test method let's say title test okay get title and I'll store this in string and I'll simply print title of the page is title so this is simple script here I have written so we have this is the test method yet we have to write test cases like this so this is my test method only we have one test case and this is before test this method will execute this setup method will execute before the start of the test so we have other uh, annotations guys we can use instead of before test I can use before class or before method as well but I'll show you in the next session like what are the different usage of and what are the properties of different annotations in the next session so if you right click here this program is ready so if you right click here and run as you can see test ng this is enabled now so we uh, now we don't see uh, no more see this Java application right so here we have we can see test ng test so we can execute this test so browser is getting launched it will navigate to that URL and uh, after some time it will close the browser once it is fully loaded I can see it is done now you can see title test uh, this is the yeah title of the page is automation testing insider different elements on a web page so this is the title of the page and here you can see the results so test run one test case failure zero escapes zero okay and let me just show you some more details some more things uh, test ng framework this is our project so if you right click and refresh here you can see test output folder so this is generated by test ng now so here you can see a emailable report so this is HTML report and we have index.html so I'll show you this too right click and open with web browser so here you can see like this let me just open in chrome so this is the results guys uh, default test we have only one test case that is passed and this is the time taken in milliseconds okay and uh, yeah this is our test case like where it is available from which package and what is the class name title test this is the uh, test method name and let me just uh, show you another report we have test index.html as well the browser once again here you can see sorry it is available here in this index.html in this location the in the project location so simply you can open like this here you can see all suites okay test results chronological view also you can see here in this side so method in chronological order and uh, yeah this is the setup method before test and this is after test and this is the test method so we'll discuss like more about 
uh, reports later on now let me just close this so this is the simple program using test ng now there is another way you can create the test class uh, automatically you can set up here i have done manually i have written all these before test and after test so here what you can do so just simply you have to right click on this src folder new other and here we have test ng class select that click on next here we have to give the source folder so src package name you have to select from you can select here uh, fail to list packages what happened one second uh, yeah so test ng framework this is our framework we have to select src yeah now we have to select package name so what is our package name com.testng package right select that and let's say testng class name is new test and here you can select all the annotations okay whatever annotations you required you can select and uh, click on finish here you can give the xml suite file name as in as well and click on finish so here you can see new test class is created so this is how you can set up your test ng class where you will get all the uh, annotations okay so we have covered the introduction of test ng today and in the next video i'll talk about different annotations and uh, how to use them okay and how they are uh, they are going to i mean how it is executed we'll discuss about them so thank you guys for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to automation testing insider.com so in the last video we talked about an introduction to test ng and we have seen how to install test ng like how to install the plugins of test ng and we have written a simple script using test ng and we have used different annotations or i would say few few of the annotations we have used like before test after test and we have created a test method okay using annotation at the rate test so this is simple script which we have written in the last session to launch the browser and here we have written one test case like to uh, get the title of the page and at last we close the browser okay so this is simple script now today we'll discuss the second part of test ng framework where we'll discuss different annotations available in test ng and these are the important annotations or i would say mandatory and annotations so different if you talk about the real time projects so uh, the projects may differ in terms of requirements but uh, execution will be the same like uh, we need all these annotations to run a project okay so we'll discuss about different annotations today like here i have listed down before suite after suite before test after test okay so these are the different annotations we'll discuss in detail and i'll create simple program to understand uh, what is the hierarchy of uh, the execution hierarchy of all these annotations okay so let's get started with before suite so this annotated method will run only once before all tests in the suite okay so let me show you one xml file test ng.xml which is there in my previous framework so here we have system test ng system test test ng.xml so what it says the annotated method will be run only once before all tests in this suite have run so take an example of this test ng.xml here we have suite tag and it is ending here okay so suite is nothing but the collection of different tests so this is a test tag so we may, we may have uh, this one test right now we may have some other test as well 
so this suite this before suite will execute the uh, method associated with before suite will execute only once before this suite only okay take an example of this suite automation test suite so if you use before uh, before suite method okay so it will be executed first here and after the execution of this suite after suite will execute okay this is another annotation after suite okay so take an example if you have uh, multiple test inside this suite this is one test and take an example if you have another suite even though it will execute only once the before suite suite will execute only once and uh, after the execution of this test and if you have another test after that only once this suite will complete then only will get uh, i mean this after suite will be executed okay if you have some more suites okay take an example this is one suite and if you have one more suite like automation test suite this is the one one of the suites okay Sim in similar way if you have another suite then that method will be executed again okay let's talk about before test so this annotated annotation method will be run before any test method belonging to the test classes inside test tag is run so here we have test tag okay so do not worry about uh, this xml so from next video onwards we'll discuss about test ng.xml and we'll discuss about different annotation attributes as well okay so let's talk about this before tests okay so this annotated method will be run before any test method belonging to the classes inside test tag is run okay so here we have only one test test right wordpress application test so that annotation method this annotation before test will execute before this execution of this test okay and uh, after test will execute once this test is done then after test will execute okay let's talk about before class so this annotated method will be run only once before the first test method in the current class is invoked so here we have different classes in this classes tag okay so before class means it will run before this class okay and uh, once it is done then uh, this class uh, this method will be executed after class and again for this class this before class will be executed similarly for the third third test class fourth test class and fifth test class so these are the different classes okay inside classes tag so this is how before class and after class will be executed we have before method this annotation method will be run before each test method okay so inside login page test we have different take an example of this this script where we have this test method right so similarly we may have some more test methods uh, method here inside a simple uh, inside a uh, same class okay this test one we may have test two test 3 like that so before method will execute before each test method okay and after method will execute after each test method we have two more uh, important annotations before groups okay so here we have groups if you see in this test ng dot xml uh, here we have groups so we'll talk about groups later on in the next video i'll show you i'll create a complete test ng program where we'll discuss using test ng xml will execute and where we'll create uh, there i'll create suite test uh, groups and all okay there we'll discuss before groups and after groups so this is the hierarchy of test ng annotations execute execution okay the one which we have discussed earlier 
these are the different annotations and this is the hierarchy so here you can see before suite will be executed at top okay after that before test before class before method and after suite will be executed once this suite once this suite is done and then only it will be executed at last after suite okay so i'll create a simple program where we'll understand uh, all these annotations how the execution uh, sequence okay so in the last video i have created test ng framework there i'll create we have package called com dot test ng package here i'll create new class so annotation execution and here what will do will start so the first annotation is before suite so we'll write before suite like this and uh, we have to write method public void let's say before suite method and i'll create simple method only will the the main purpose is to check the execution of all these annotations okay so what i'll do simply i'll print some statement here let's say before suite is executed before suite is executed okay let's say after suite after that after suite method i have to change the annotation to after suite we have to import after suite as well and here i'll change it to after suite so i'm just printing some statement simply copy paste this comment what is next before suite after suite we have before test annotation we have to import this one second we have to write first uh, public void method and uh, before test and we have to import oh sorry we have to write some message over here before test is executed similarly we have after test after test annotation here i'll give after test annotation we have to import after test from org dot test ng dot annotations and we have before class annotation public void before class i'll give message before class is executed simply i'll copy paste this one after after class and we have to change this to after class we have to import after class as well 
and copy paste this one this statement okay so so far we have got before suite before test before class let's cover before method and test as well okay we have before method annotation will write method public void before method I'll give comment like before method is executed let's have after method We have to import after method as well okay so we are done before suite after suite before suite is executed after suite is executed before test uh, after test before class before class after class and uh, before method after method now here I'll write test one test method public public void test method and I'll give messages test method is executed okay this test method sorry we should give like this test method is executed so we are done with our script simple script we have just given the comments like this before suite is executed after suite is executed like this okay so we have covered this hierarchy now let me run this whether it will execute properly or not in the order which we have discussed so here we are not uh, automate uh, automated any uh, web page so simply it runs very quickly so here you can see test one run failure zero skip zero so this is the sequence you can see one second before suite is executed let's compare with our uh, ppt before suite is executed before test is executed before class is executed and here we have before method is executed okay and after that this test method will be executed so here you can see test method is executed after that after method after class after test right and at last after running this test after suite is executed so this is the execution sequence so we'll understand better when we uh, in the next next video when we create a complete test ng program where we'll use test ng xml there you will understand uh, this better now let's do one thing let's have one more method test method so I'll copy paste this one let's say this is test method 1 and this is test method 2 now we'll see how the execution will be okay how the sequence will be so let me just run right click test ng test now let's see the sequence so we here we have two test cases test method is nothing but the test cases okay two test methods we have so here you can see default test test run 2 failure 0 skip 0 and uh, yeah this is the execution sequence before suite 
so we have only one suite okay i mean we don't have any suite here but this how the sequence will be sequence if you use before suite annotation before test before class before method test method 1 is executed and here you can see test before method is executed before the test method and immediately after the test method after method is executed you can see for this one and here you can see before method is again executed before the test method before this test method 2 right so this is what we discussed right uh, test method before method and after method so the annotation method will be run before each test method so here you can see before test executed two times so before sorry before method is executed two times before this test method and before this test method so once the method is executed test method is executed that after that after method will be executed so you can see before method after method before method after method and we have after class after test and at last we have after suite is executed so this is how the sequence of test ng annotations and we'll discuss before groups and after groups going forward and uh, i have listed down few like different attributes in the annotation like we have description timeout priority depends on methods enable and groups so these are the different attributes in the annotation okay so in the next video we'll talk about how to create a full fledged test ng program script and uh, how to use other annotations and uh, diff uh, how to create test ng xml okay so thank you guys for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to automation testing .com. so this is the third part of test ng framework series and uh, in the previous video we talked about different annotations using simple script so we talked about uh, before suite after suite before test after test so these are the different annotations we have seen and uh, going forward guys i'll create some more scripts real time examples where you can understand better uh, these annotations okay and today we'll discuss some more features of test ng like what are the different features what are the different attributes which are associated with uh, test ng annotation so we'll discuss about them so here i have listed down all the topics all the uh, i would say features of test ng different things which i have uh, which we are going to cover today so first of all we'll create a test ng program there we'll apply all our uh, uh, different attributes and different features okay so we'll create test ng program and we'll discuss like what is an assertion and how to put assertion in your test case okay so this is really important so till now we haven't used uh, test ng assertion and uh, because validation is very uh, an important part of your testing so uh, what how to put validation using assertion i'll show you and uh, this attribute is really important priority attribute so this gives the priority to your test case so the priority for this test method lower priorities will be scheduled first okay so we'll discuss like what is default priority of your test case and how to assign priority to your test cases and what will happen if you give negative priority value so we'll discuss we'll discuss about uh, all these uh, points and this is really important for interview purpose as well and there is an another attribute called description attribute so that uh, so you can provide some description to your test case and there is a point like uh, yeah what happens when a test method fails so we'll discuss like suppose we have uh, five test cases so in the middle if any of the tests is failed so what will happen okay we'll discuss that and depends on methods okay so this attribute the list of methods this method depends on okay this is an attribute 
and there is an another attribute called depends on groups depends on groups so probably we'll dis discuss this later on uh, at the time when we create testengine.xml when we de uh, when we discuss about testengine.xml okay when we run uh, our program using testengine.xml at that time we'll discuss about uh, depends on groups okay and we'll learn today like how to ignore your test at test level class level and package level there is an attribute called enabled so we can set two values uh, true or false okay and uh, there is an attribute called always run if that is set to true this method will always be run even if it depends on method that failed so we'll sh uh, i'll show you how to apply this always run okay and there is an attribute called invocation count so the number of time this method should be invoked so suppose you want to execute your test case multiple times then we can use this invocation count okay i'll show you how to use that and at last we'll see how to apply at the rate test at class level okay so these are the different things which we are going to cover today and uh, uh, i would request you if you are new to my channel then please subscribe uh, my channel and uh, click on bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you now let's get started with the first thing which is uh, create a test ng program so my eclipse is already open here so what i'll do i'll create java project i'll give name test ng demo 1 because demo is already present so i'll give demo 1 click on finish so earlier you know that how to import jar files so just right click on project we have build path configure build path and from add external jars we'll we have to import selenium java jar files so just select all the jar files and we have to select outside of libs folder as well click on apply apply and close now we have to we have imported here all the jar files selenium java jar files now we have to import test ng jar files as well so just right click again on project build path configure build path and here we have add library so just select that test ng click on next finish apply apply and close now our uh, project is ready so this in this src folder i'll create new package i'll give test ng package okay and click on finish i'll create a new class so if you go to my blog okay that is automation test center.com and you go to website so here we have different websites i'll take an example of this orange hrm application i think it is already logged in so we have to log out yeah this is the uh, orange hrm application so this is open source hr management uh, application so today we'll uh, take an example of this application So here I'll create orange HRM test. No need to select public static void main, so simply click on finish. So what I'll do, I'll copy the setup method from previous class. So I think we have here the previous. Let's copy this. and we have to declare our web driver here web driver driver at class level and i'll give before before class annotation to this uh, setup method because we are going to use only this test class and uh, this will run this method will run before the start of this class okay before executing this class so that this method will execute first 
I'll create one test here. I'll give name like launch URL or launch application. So what I'll do, I'll copy paste. I'll just remove the driver.get command from here and I'll put it over here and we have to change the URL yeah so we'll use the uh, setup method only to uh, launch the browser okay and maximize it and later on uh, yeah uh, this is the te test method launch app so we'll navigate to this orange HRM site I'll create another test public void let's say login test let me just go back to orange HRM and here we have to inspect username so we have name text username id as text username so we can take any one of them so driver dot find element by dot id i'll put id over here and using send keys method we have to provide username so here we have username admin and password 123 admin 123 so admin and let's do for uh, password as well so this is the password inspect password here we have name and id same so let's take this time name this is the name for password field and uh, we have password 123 admin123 now we have to click on login login button okay so this login button has id btn login so driver dot find element by dot id i'll put this id and click on i mean we have to give click method here okay click operation okay after login what we'll do we'll write some more test cases so, so let me just log in into this application so let's after login let's verify the current url and uh, title so we'll write two more methods here public void current URL test I'll give driver dot get this will give you the current URL once again we have get current url right yeah and i'll store in a string url like this okay so guys so far we have not covered uh, uh, assertion in our test right now okay so i'll put later on okay assertion validation points in our test case let's write another test case public public void let's say title test so driver dot get title we have method called get title so this will give you the title of the page and will store in a string variable 
I'll give title and uh, yeah at last let's log out from the application for that I'll create method public void logout test and uh, yeah for logout what we need to do we have to click on this admin welcome admin and here we'll get this logout option okay so first of all we have to inspect this so here we have an id welcome for that field so driver dot find element by dot id and i'll put this id over here and we have to click on that and after that we have to inspect this logout okay so so let me just quickly write xpath for this anchor tag and uh, text is equal to what text we have logout yeah so this is correct xpath so i'll use that xpath driver dot find element by dot xpath so if you are new to xpath then you can visit my previous videos on xpath css and some other locators dot click let's put some weight in between thread dot slip oh sorry yeah thread dot oh, slip let's say two seconds of weight we have to add throws declaration this is logo test and at last what we'll do we'll close the browser so we have uh, let's say first public void let's set tear down okay and here i'll write driver dot close and i'll assign after class annotation to this method so our script is ready so what we have done before class uh, this is the method setup method and we have given uh, before class annotation to this method okay we have assigned so this will execute first to launch the browser and later on we have one test case to open the application another test to for login another test for uh, to test the url another test to test the title and this is logout test and at last after class method will execute to close the browser so let's run this program hopefully it should work let's see browser is launched navigate it to orange hrm logged in into the application logout yeah and at last close the browser now we'll see the results so these are the five test cases which we have written test run 5 failure 0 skip 0 okay and uh, if you refresh the project so here you can see test output so just expand that and uh, different reports will be generated so we have emailable report we have five test cases the time is given start and total time taken and this orange hrm is present inside this package so that is given so this is default test we have not given any name of our test cases so this is uh default test okay another reports we have uh, index.html 
okay here you can see one second yeah five methods five passed five test methods and five passed uh, passed methods show so here you can see current url test launch application login test logout test title test okay and if you select this one info there is an there is a test ng xml test ng hyphen customize suite xml this is uh, automatically generated internally okay so probably in the next video i'll show you how to create your own test ng xml file and how to uh, run that <coughs> i'm sorry guys yeah so this is a test ng xml file okay here you can see class name test ng dot orange hrm test so yeah in the next video i'll show you how to create your own test ng xml file and how to run your test using test ng xml okay so this is another report and uh, we have one more report default suite click on that here you can see all the methods and time taken here okay like total time taken at total time is 18 seconds started date is given date and time now what i'll do i'll apply all the features like uh, let's put assertion first what is let's discuss about assertion and how to put assertion later on we'll see like how to put assertion in our test cases okay so what is an assertion so assertion determines the state of application whether it is the same what we are expecting or not so basically this is to put the validation in your, in your test cases okay so without validating your test case your test case are uh, i would say invalid or there is no use of that test case okay because we have to it is only successful when we compare with our expected value right so suppose take an example of this one this test so we are launching the application so first we need to verify whether we are launching the correct url or not okay or uh, yeah after launching this we have to validate some of the some of the features over there let me just uh, show you so suppose we are uh, launching this url so we should uh, validate this uh, username and password field should be displayed okay so assertions are very important in your uh, test okay another definition is an assertion is used to compare the actual result of an application with expected result okay and there are two types of assertion in test ng hard assertion and soft assertion so i'll do one i'll do one thing i'll create separate videos video on assertion where we'll discuss two types of assertion hard assertion and soft assertion what is and we'll discuss like what is the difference between them okay so let's give assertion in our test cases okay so let's see the first test launch app okay so what i'll do after launching this url what we need to verify let's say let's verify this image field like this uh, one second yeah let's inspect this image so we'll verify that this image is enabled here okay or displayed here so to save our time simply i'll copy the x path yeah so this is the x path of this image so simply i'll copy driver dot uh, find element by dot x path and i'll put the x path of that image here and we have different methods so here we have is displayed i'll put it over here and i'll store that will give boolean value so i'll store boolean let's say image okay and how to validate that that image okay so we have assert class and we have different methods in assert class okay to put the assertion we have assert class and uh, these are the different methods 
so i'll create a separate video on assertion as i have said earlier okay so we have let's say assert true boolean condition so i'll say image okay so this if this is true then this test case will pass simply so we have put the assertion in our launch app test now let's put assertion over here after logging into the application so let me just log in into application yeah now let's verify this image inspect this i'll simply i'll copy paste to copy the xpath to save our time yeah this is the image of this orange charim okay so driver dot find element by dot xpath this is the xpath so after logging into the application will verify whether this orange hrm logo is displayed over here or not okay so what i'll do will we have method is displayed you can give is enabled as well and again i'll store in boolean value boolean and uh, image one i'll give Again, we'll put assertion over here. Assert true one function we have and image one. Okay. So our two test cases are ready. What about the third one here? What we'll do? Let's say this is a actual actual URL, right? What we'll get? using this command will be the actual url and let's compare with expected one so expected url i'll i can give like this so after logging into the application what is the url this is the url and double quotation we have to give yeah and here i'll put assert dot assert equals okay so we have different uh, assertion uh, assert equals method okay so here you can get the string one as well okay actual what is actual this is actual and this is expected okay so this is how you can verify url test and let's say this is actual title okay this will give you the actual title driver.get title and will compare with expected expected title so what is expected title so let me just view page source we'll see uh, this is the title of the page after logging into the application so here we'll give the title now we'll compare assert dot assert equals okay and here we'll give actual and expected title okay and uh, let's put assertion over here logout test okay so once you log out okay your url should be this so let's verify this one after logging out okay so what I'll do so driver dot find one second driver dot current URL get current URL right get current URL 
and I'll store in a string or let's say actual URL okay and what should be the expected URL expected URL this is the expected URL and we have other some methods here assert equals okay and we have to give actual and expected value now we put assertion in our test cases so let me just run it login into the application now it will log out okay now we'll see total run 5 passes 4 failure 1 okay let me just uh, look into it yeah so this current URL test is failed I'll show you why it is failed I'll give you the reason okay why it is failed uh, the last one okay and uh, yeah you can see in other uh, this one so this is the this is how our test case is executed now let's talk about different attributes so priority attribute okay so you can see here our test cases are not prioritized here right it is executed in some order so what is that order so if you don't give priority to a test cases it will be executed alphabetically okay so yeah here you can see c com comes first so that's why this current url test is uh, executed first and after that l l l and last t so if you don't give test cases uh, I mean if you don't provide uh, priority to a test cases then it will be executed alphabetically in alphabetically order okay so that's why this current test current URL test is failed okay because that is executed first now we'll uh, yeah provide a priority to a test cases so what I'll do I do not touch this class simply I'll copy and I'll reuse it. I'll paste it over here. And yeah, let's give orange charm test one. And what I'll do to explain that priority attribute, I'll give this launch h launch app test to test case one. Okay and we have login test as 2 we have current URL test that is test 3 we have title test I'll make that as test 4 test case 4 and this is test case 5 <coughs> sorry So we have five test cases and here we have given in proper order test case 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, now let me run it whether it will run successfully or not because last time it got failed. Okay, now let me just run this. logged into the application and it will test title and URL and then log out now you can see guys uh, all test cases are passed total test run 5 failure 0 
and this is the order this time test case 1 2 3 4 5 okay so because till here it is the same and after that it will take this 1 2 3 4 5 so in this order our test got executed and successfully uh, passed all the test cases okay so this is the default default priority of uh, our test cases like if you don't give any priority then it will be executed in alphabetical order okay and the next one is how to assign priority to your test cases even if you give this let's see let me just uh, show you like even if you give this test case after before test case 3 even it will run in that particular order so let me just uh, show you Yeah, here you can see test case executed in that order only. One, two, three, four, five. Test case one, two, three, four, five. And here you can see also test case one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so this is the default. Uh, I would say priority of your test cases. Now let's assign priority to your test cases. How to give? Okay. So and along with at the red test annotation here we will give bracket and I will provide priority and I will give 1 for here ok similarly here I will give priority to 2 similarly for this we have priority to 3 like that simply copy paste this one I'll give you four priority four and this I'll give five. Uh, now let me just run this. This is how you can give the priority to your test cases. You can assign the priority. Now we'll see the execution sequence. Now here you can see test case 1, 2, 4 and 3. Okay, why four, four, uh, test case 4 comes first? Because we have assigned test case 4 uh, as priority 3. Here you can see. We have assigned this method. Uh, the priority of this method to priority 3 okay and uh, this priority 4 to test case 3 so that's why they have executed in different order test case 1 2 4 3 and 5 okay th so this is how you can assign priority to your test cases and uh, what happen when we give negative priority value so let me do one thing let's give minus one here we'll see what will happen okay so this is interview question as well so what will happen if you give negative priority to your test cases the answer we'll see in a couple of minutes I would say a couple of seconds yeah, here you can see all test cases are passed. So let's see the order 1, 2, 4, 3, 5. This is same as X grade last time. Okay. Okay. So here you can, here I have mentioned lower priorities will be scheduled first. So whether it is negative, positive, or anything, so negative values will be X grade first. Negative priorities values will be X grade first. Okay. So this is how priority attribute works and what is next description attribute so you can provide description to your test cases so let me just give some description to our test cases so simply you can 
give comma and you'll you have one description attribute here you can provide a, what is this test case this is to launch the launch URL or launch app okay this is to launch the URL launch the application so here we'll provide description like uh, login application test login application launch app test login application test third is uh, title test title test like that we can give fourth is so you can provide description to your test cases like these guys and uh, yeah URL test verify URL and uh, this one what I'll give here this is logout test logout test okay let me just rerun this program again Now we'll see the result. Here you can see, guys. Uh, test case one. This is this is the description, okay, which we have given in our uh, annotation. Launch app test. Test case two. What it says? Login application test. Test uh, test case four says title test. Verify URL. Logout test. So if you want to give some description to your test case, you can provide as well, okay. So this is about description attribute. What happens when a test method fails? So let's say in the middle if any of our test cases fail failing. Okay. So let's say this is priority two, priority three. Suppose this is failing. So let me just fill this by giving some wrong expected uh, value. Okay. So here I have given expected title as orange hrm one. So let me rerun this program. So here you can see failure 1 passes 4 failure 1. So even if your uh, any of the test cases failed, okay, it will continue the execution of remaining test cases. Here you can see first and second executed and fourth test case is failed, okay, because we are expecting orange HRM1 but found and you can see the beautiful uh, this one uh, exception as well. Okay, assertion error. We are expected uh, orange HRM1 but found orange HRM. But remaining test cases will be executed afterwards. Okay, so this is about uh, this point like what happens when a test method fails. So it will continue execution. Depends on methods. So the list of methods this method depends on. Now, what we'll do test case 3 and 4. See all these four test cases are depends on and really depends on this or uh, let's say uh, this these test cases like three and four are depends on this login test right so what I'll do I'll create dependency between these two test cases though they are not practically dependent on each other but uh, I'll use depends on over here depends on methods so in this way also you can give multiple uh, test cases so let me just give like test case 4 like this and comma test case uh, 1 like this you can give depends on methods 
for now what i'll give uh, what i'll give test case 4 this test case 3 depends on test case 4 like that i'll give uh, let's do reverse yeah so test case 3 test case 4 will depend on will depend on this test case 3 so what i'll do i'll put test case 3 only okay so this method this test case will be executed only when this will pass okay otherwise it will it won't be executed so for now when i run this test case uh, it will run successfully because this is we are going to run this test case okay let me just rerun once again oh that is already failed so we have to rerun it again Yeah, we have to change this earlier. We have uh, updated this. Okay, so now I have corrected this. Now let me run rerun this. So our test case four depends on test case three. Okay, because we here we have given attribute depends on methods. So all the test cases will run successfully this time. So here you can see all test cases will be passed. Now we'll see a scenario where uh, test case three getting failed. Okay, because test case four depends on this test case. So what I'll do, I'll put some value here. Uh, let's say at last to fail this test case. Okay. Now what will what will happen? We'll see whether this will execute or not because this test case it depends on this test case let me rerun this now we'll see total five test cases one failure one escapes okay so here you can see first second are executed successfully third test case is failed because uh, because of this one uh, assertion error Ex we are expecting this url because we have changed the url okay but found this url okay and uh, fourth is not executed okay because method orange hrm test 1 test case 4 okay depends on not successfully finished methods okay so it depends on so this test case 4 depends on test case 3 sorry this one test case 4 depends on test case 3 so that's why uh, this test case is not executed okay so let me just uh, change this to change back to the normal url the correct url okay so this is how depends on methods executed and i have discussed earlier we'll discuss depends on groups later on how to ignore test at test level okay so what we'll do suppose you want to ignore this test case let's say yeah this test case uh, let's say yeah let's ignore this one first so we have uh, an annotation called ignore so we have to just give a top of uh, this at the red test annotation we are here we can give at the red ignore now let me ra run this and uh, i'll remove this depends on Now we'll rerun. 
so this case will be ignored here you can see total test run 4 passes 4 so that case is we have ignored that test case ok so here you can see only 1, 2, 3 and 5th test cases are executed ok 4th one is ignored ok so this is how you can use at the rate ignore at test level now how to use at class level so simply what you can do you can use this at the rate ignore at class level at top of uh, top of our class like this so let's rerun our script so nothing will be executed here you can see Here you can see total test run 0, passes, fail, failures 0, skip 0. Okay, no test found, nothing was run. Okay, because we have given at the rate ignore at class level. So, suppose you want to uh, you want to ignore all the test cases inside a test class, so simply give at the rate ignore at test level. And how to use at package level how to use at the rate ignore at package level so here we have package test ng package ok so, so let me try to give ignore here ok and this gives an error what is that error package annotations must be in file package hyphen info dot java ok so it gives an error package annotations must be in file package info.java so this we cannot directly apply this at the rate annotation here at package level so what what we need to do in our package in our package this is our package right so here what we'll do we'll create package like this one second not here above this we have this uh, uh, src folder right so right click on that new package and here we'll select one second yeah you can select here only and package will select create package info.java package hyphen info.java okay let me just repeat this so we have to select that package the, the package where we want to put uh, at the rate ignore ok so just select that right click new package and we have to create package info.java so just click on finish so this package hyphen info.java uh, class file will be created so simply give ignore here at the rate ignore and we have to import ignore from org.testng.annotations.ignore now let me run this this program Now here you can see all cases are ignored because we have given at the rate ignore at package level. So net no test found, nothing was run. Okay, so here we have given at the rate ignore inside package hyphen info dot java file. Okay, so simply I'll remove this now it will run 
what is next we have enabled true or false so this is another way to ignore your test cases so let me just ignore some of our test cases let's say you want to ignore this test case this is at test level only so what you can do we have enabled keyword uh, enabled attribute and here we'll give no need to give double quotes because this this will take true and false so simply you will give true let's say false suppose you want to ignore this test case so we want to oh sorry this is uh, for login test we cannot ignore this so let's ignore this one okay so we want to ignore test case 4 so let me just rerun so here we have given enabled is equal to false run as test ng dot test ng test now you can see here four test cases okay our four cases are executed test case 1 2 3 5 four is not getting executed okay here you can see because we here we have given enable is equal to false okay what is next always run okay if it is set to true this method will always be run even if it depends on a method that failed okay so let's say even if it is if even enabled is equal to false also it will run so here you can give one second always run always run is equal to true if it is true then it will always be executed okay here you can see one second fourth test case 4 is not executed sorry this will apply only even if it is uh, uh, always run is equal to true yeah because we have given enabled is equal to false so that's why it is not getting executed and what I'll do always run is equal to true and let's say it depends on depends on method uh, test case 3 ok it depends on test case 3 and will fail this test case 3 ok let me just fail this so here we'll give some so even if it is even if test case 3 is failing though it will execute because we have set always run is equal to true Yeah, here you can see five test cases are executed because third is already failing because we have given a wrong URL here. Okay, and since this fourth test case is depends on third test case, but since uh, earlier we have seen right uh, if uh, the previous method uh, on which our test case it depends on if that gets failed. Then our test case won't be executed okay but here since we have given always run is equal to true so this will be executed and uh, what is next 
we have invocation count so the number of times this method should be invoked okay so so let's say if you want to execute this test case multiple times so what you will do we have invocation count here you can give let's say three times you want to execute this particular test case test case 3 so simply you can give invocation count is equal to 3 so let me rerun this So here you can see 7 test cases executed. So test case 3 executed 3 times. Okay. 1 of 3, 2 of 3 and 3 of 3. So this is how you can use invocation count. And what is last? At the rate test at class level. So how to use at the rate at class level. So So simply what you can do you can give instead of giving at the rate test at uh, method levels you can directly give at class level so we have another class this class okay so simply what i'll do i'll remove test at the rate test from all the methods okay like this Okay, and uh, simply you can give at class level at the rate test uh, test. So all the public method will be treated as at the rate test will be treated as test methods only if you give at the rate test at class level. So I'll rerun this program. Here you can see 5 run, 4 pass, 1 fail. So that failure is because of order. So this is the first program which we have created at the beginning of our uh, video where we have not given the priority. So that's why the one test case is failed. But the concept is when you give at the rate test at class level, all will be treated as test methods only. Okay, all the public method. Okay. And uh, yeah so yeah so we have covered all the points today and uh, thank you guys for watching this video and in the next video we'll talk about probably we'll discuss about uh, uh, how to create test ng xml file and we'll see some other test ng features thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to automation testing .com. so this is the fourth video of test ng framework series and today we are going to discuss about testng.xml file so in the last video we have seen different features of testng and we talked about different points like what is an assertion and how to put assertion in your test we have seen different attributes like priority attribute description depends on methods enabled always run invocation count etc so these are the different points we have covered in last video and uh, today we are going to talk about testng.xml file so this is the agenda for today so we'll discuss like what is testng.xml file how to generate it what are the different ways to set up testng.xml we'll discuss like how to create manually testng.xml file i'll show you and at last we'll discuss like how to run multiple testng.xml in one go and uh, yeah if you have multiple testng.xml files and then how to club it into one xml file and how to execute it okay so let's get started so testng.xml file is configuration file in testng okay so earlier what we were doing we are executing our test cases from test class only okay so this is the test script which we have written in the last video 
and how we have executed we have just simply right click on the class and we have executed as run as test ng test okay now we are going to use test ng dot xml file where we can use different classes packages packages classes and test methods we can configure in our test suite and we can execute along with uh, we can execute through test ng dot xml file okay so it is used to define test suites and test so what do you mean by suites so suites is combination of different test it provides different options to include packages classes and independent test methods in our test suite okay so i'll show you how to how we can configure different packages classes and independent test methods in our test suite in coming slides and i'll show you demo also it allow it also allow us to configure multiple tests in single test suite and run them in multi threaded environment okay so this is about parallel testing uh, where we can run multiple thread in one go okay so regarding multi threading and uh, parallel testing we will discuss in the next video so this is simple xml file test ng xml file below xml describes the format of test ng xml file so this is the format of test ng xml file so this is uh, these two are uh, what we can say these two are uh, optional uh, setup for xml file okay and here we have suite tag the this is the topmost tag we have suite so suite is a combination of different test so here we have name of the particular suite and this is the test tag okay so this is the name of test tag thread count uh, this is optional here because we are not going to uh, do parallel testing over here so here you can remove this okay uh, when you do parallel testing then this is required okay and here we have classes classes tag inside that we have different classes like uh, this com dot package name this is the package name dot class one class two class three we have okay and this is the end of classes tag here and uh, end of test tag and at last end of suite tag so this is the simple format of test ng dot xml so how to generate test ng dot xml so let me just uh, show you so this is the last uh, this is the script which we have written in the last video okay so this is simple script uh, on orange hrm application which we have automated okay so let me just go through quickly about this test class so we have couple of methods before test and after test okay before test and after test so here i have just given the print statement and before suite in before suite we are uh, launching the browser uh, this is setup method and here the test starts uh, test cases so we have at the test annotation we are launching the app uh, this application okay or in hrm and in second test case we have uh, we have given the priority as well priority 1 and priority 2 to this test case login test we are logging into the application third test belongs to uh, verifying the uh, url okay after logging into the application we are verifying the url so priority given as 3 this is the fourth test to test the title of the page and finally we are logging out from the application so this is the fifth test and after suite we are uh, closing the browser so this is about orange hrm application which we have automated and here i have added three packages in this uh, project test ng framework so here we have three packages com dot orange hrm one second let me expand this orange hrm admin department so here i have added one more class so here I have not written any selenium script simply I have given some print statement before class is executed after class is executed along with some annotation before class after class okay and uh, yeah this is the uh, class which we have uh, we have discussed just now orange hrm based test dot java okay and uh, sample test I have added uh, one more test 
uh, one test class sample test inside this package only com dot orange hrm best test okay and we have third package that is com dot orange hrm live so live department class here we have so here also i have written simple script i mean uh, there is no sim selenium script over here as well i have just written simple uh, uh, print statement okay now let me just uh, show you like how to create xml file okay so suppose i want to create xml file for this uh, this particular package okay so how to do that just right click on that and we have test ng here if you right click on package and here we have an option test ng okay now convert to test ng so click on that so this is so here you can see location uh, you can give the location i mean this uh, root directory okay and here will give the default uh, by default it will give testng.xml so you can change name according to your uh, usage so i can give like orange hrm orange hrm testng hrm dot xml okay sweet name i'll give sweet only or let's say sweet one test name test one so this is the default uh, xml with uh, showing okay so just click on finish so here you can see my test ng dot xml just double click on that so it will open now so you can see uh, we have created the xml file for this package which contains two classes so here you can see those two classes getting added okay these two class uh, classes got added here com dot orange orange hrm base test dot sample test and orange hrm base test test okay if you want we can remove this thread count uh, that is not required for now and uh, let me run it whether uh, we are able to execute our test cases or not okay so how many test cases we have or in hrm we have uh, five test here five test method and uh, sample test we have only one test so there should be six test cases uh, after execution okay so let me just run as test ng suite logging into the application and uh, it will close up it will log out and uh, it will close the browser now here we go you can see one second yeah uh, total test run six process six failure zero skip zero uh, if you go to another tab results of running suite so you can see suite one we have given the name suite uh, i'll show you let me just so here we have suite 1 suite name test name is test 1 here you can see this is suite 1 test 1 and these are the two packages com.orangehrm base test so it contains only one test class that is simple test and uh, other package contains other class contains five test cases okay so total six test cases now let me just uh, uh, show you the reports so if you right click and uh, refresh so test output folder generated here so here you can see suite 1 suite 1 is created because here we have given the name as suite 1 uh, email label report if you click on that so here you can see suite 1 okay and these are the different classes we have executed different methods inside a class okay so these are the different tests we have executed and index.html another report if you open here so one test okay and uh, six methods six passed so you can see like this all the 
all the test methods okay one suite so this is suite one okay you can see here and uh, yeah if you click on this suite one here you can see one second test one so this is test wise so these are the different methods which we have executed and a time capture so this is how you can see the reports now similarly you can create xml file uh, file for other uh, other packages as well so let me create for this one test ng convert to test ng so this is let's say suite 2 test 2 okay and i'll give name package 2 let's say package 2 or give proper name this is related to admin department okay this package belongs to admin department which contains different classes of admin department though we have only one test class so here i have given name as test ng admin so click on finish another xml file will be generated here so if you want to generate for this one or in hrm live so you can generate xml for file for that as well so here i'll give suit name 3 test 3 and uh, this i'll give name name test ng hyphen live click on finish okay and suppose you want to club all the test classes into one xml file okay if you want to generate from project level and how to do it you just right click on project and here we have convert to test ng so here you can see you can give name all sweet all test all and here we'll give test ng hyphen all so you can see all the classes are listed here okay all the classes are listed here now click on finish so let me just open this one so this is how all the classes are listed down here uh, let me come back to ppt and uh, how to create manually testng.xml file so i'll show you so this is my project if you want to click uh, if you want to generate manually so new file and uh, yeah for this project you can give here name any name like uh, test ng let's say one dot xml like that you can create here you can see and here you have to write all the uh, the xml file like this okay so this is how you can create manually so let me just delete this now i'll show you other uh, configurations so if you go to yeah you can specify package name instead of class names as well okay so i'll show you this is our uh, suite all okay so here we have listed down all the package name so instead of class name sorry we have listed on all the class names okay so instead of class we can directly give package name as well okay so what i'll do i'll simply i'll delete this classes tag okay and here we have package packages okay and inside this we have package here we'll give the first package second and third so simply we'll give package name from here in double quotes you just give package name one second we have to save this and uh, just copy the package name from the second package and what is the third this is the third package so simply just copy this so this is how you can create xml using 
packages so control shift f okay so this is how you can create uh, xml so let me just read on it so this is the xml right test ng hyphen all So there are 10 test cases. So there are 10 test cases, passes 10, failure 0. So here you can see the results. So about this package, we have a couple of test cases, admin test 1, admin test 2. Uh, in this class, we have 5 test cases, launch app, login test, current URL test, title test, logout test and leave department we have couple of test cases and uh, sample test we have only one test case so total 10 test cases are there so this is how you can execute uh, package wise and what is next yeah you can specify package name instead of class names and this is how you can create the groups you can also specify groups and methods to be included and excluded so this is sample xml file so here you can see we have uh, included uh, this excluded this group and included this group now let's uh, do some exercise we'll create uh, we'll divide our test into different groups and uh, we'll add into xml file so how to do that okay so let me just uh, show you just close all these and uh, let's say first this one so we'll divide our test into different uh, groups so we have a group annotation sorry group attribute okay so here you can see groups so here in double in curly braces we can give here let's say i'll give name as sanity test okay so this is for just for an example guys i am giving uh, some group name so here i have given group name as sanity so let me just copy and uh, i'll put it over here as well before sweet for this test as well sanity and uh, this test also i'll give sanity this is current url test so i'll give here let's say this is regression regression suite okay this belongs to regression group what is fourth this is also belongs to regression this is just for an example i'm giving and uh, fifth test belongs to sanity this is logout test and after sweet also we have to give sanity okay so we have divided our test into different groups uh, different means couple of groups sanity and regression okay now how to configure let's configure this one as well uh, i'll give group as sanity once again here we have to give okay now in this xml we have particular xml for this package so where is that xml this one okay so how to configure uh, groups in xml file so uh, this is the syntax so inside tests inside test uh, suite okay uh, sorry test uh, tag we have groups after that run and then include okay. so what you can do here we have groups tag okay inside that we have run and after that 
we have include what is not coming yeah include and exclude so here I'll give name sanity okay so this is the group we are including so let me just uh, show you here okay so these two are classes and uh, here we have specified the group sanity group so this XML file should only be run sanity related groups test cases which belongs to sanity group okay so I'll run it run as test ng suite So here you can see there are four test cases. Okay, so I'll show you. Here you can see simple test we have given uh, inside a sanity group, and there are three tests which we defined uh, which belongs to sanity group only. Okay, so those are executed, other test cases are not executed. Okay and uh, if you see the reports one second refresh and test output emailable report so here you can see included groups so here group is showing as sanity okay index.html here also you can see one group so this is sanity group okay and you can add exclude group as well here you can add if you want to exclude particular group then you can add particular group like sanity or sorry regression or any any group name so this is how we can divide our test cases into groups as well like this particular test case and you can give multiple names as well suppose this belongs to regression as well so you can give like this regression group okay so this particular setup so this is how you can give uh, divide uh, your test into different groups and uh, what is next and similarly you can give you can uh, add methods particular method inside uh, methods inside class we have tag called methods okay there you can give particular method so I'll show you here and uh, this is my XML inside this class we have oh, why not one second we have to we have to close this class first yeah, it is closed and what I'll do I'll here you can see methods so here you can give the method name you can include uh, one second instead of giving here because here uh, in this sample test we have only one test method so that is not possible so here I'll give and here I'll give methods second why it is not coming yeah methods and uh, I'll give inside method we have methods which we have include include tag right it will come by default include so here we can give specify the method name so let me just give method name so here you can give method name uh, if you want to exclude any particular method then you can exclude also okay uh, so this is how you can work with you can include uh, groups and uh, you can exclude or include methods particular methods as well 
and what is next you can also specify methods to be excluded included and excluded this is what we have discussed okay so this is simple test in the xml file for that and let's say what is next how to run multiple test ng suites in one file okay so how to run multiple test ng xml into one file so here we have different xml file okay take an example if you have a smoke for a smoke test you have a smoke uh, uh, test ng xml okay for uh, sanity you have separate and uh, for regression you have separate and suppose you want to club into one xml file then how to do it okay suppose you want to perform system test okay where uh, which includes all kind of test cases then how to do that so what i'll do let's say we want to club these two xml file uh, let's say admin department and uh, live department okay so how to do that so what i'll do i'll create another xml okay test ng and uh, test ng convert to test ng and i'll say system test system test xml okay and uh, yeah let it be like this click on finish so this is our xml for all the classes and what i'll do i'll rem remove all these i'll keep only suite tag okay and inside suite we have suite files tag okay and after that we have suite file again and here we'll give particular xml file which we want to execute okay so which we want to execute this test ng admin dot xml just copy paste and we have another xml this live department one yeah so this is how you can configure uh, your xml different xml files into one xml file okay in one xml suite file and you can execute your suite so let's run it system test run as test ng suite yeah since we have not written any selenium scripts over there we have just some print statements statements so that's why we have uh, it executed very quickly so here you can see admin test 1 admin test 2 and you can see guys uh, this is suite 2 suite 3 okay and here you can see live department 1 test 1 and test 2 uh, so yeah these are the suite okay so these two suites belongs to yeah this these two okay one is admin department okay this one is admin department suite 2 and this live is this belongs to suite 3 belongs to live department okay so this is how you can execute uh, different xml files in one xml file one suite file okay so we have covered all xml related so this is how you can configure your xml files uh, okay yeah so we have covered all the topics for today and uh, i'll add uh, these notes in my blog okay going forward so if you are new to my channel then please subscribe guys and uh, click on bell icon to get the interesting upcoming videos in selenium web driver and some automation some other uh, automation tools okay thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to automation testing .com. and this is fifth part of testng framework series and in the last video we talked about testng.xml file where we have configured 
uh, in different ways test ng xml file and today i'm going to discuss about parameterization using test ng so let's get started what is parameterization so parameterization is an execution strategy which allows us to run a test case automatically multiple times with different input values okay so suppose you want to test uh, you want to execute any a particular test case with different set of values then that is called parameterization okay that is also called data driven testing so if you want to learn more about data driven testing and parameterization then you can refer uh, this video in my a youtube channel that is selenium java framework hybrid framework for beginners so here i have explained clearly about data driven framework okay and uh, so how we can achieve parameterization in test ng so there are two ways by which we can achieve parameterization in test ng okay and another definition of parameterization uh, parameterization given here to pass multiple data to the application at runtime we need parameterize our test script okay yeah so there are two ways by which we can achieve parameterization in test ng first one is with the help of parameters annotation and test ng xml file okay so i'll show you demo like how we can achieve parameterization using at the rate parameter parameters annotation and with the help of data provider annotation okay so let's have a look first parameters annotation and test ng xml file okay so when to use this okay so select parameterization using annotation when you when you want to deal with complexity and the number of input combinations are less okay so here i have given an example like Uh, we can pass username and password through testng.xml instead of hard coding it in test methods okay so this is one example or another example is we can pass browser name as parameter to execute uh, to execute in a specific browser so suppose we are uh, we have three different browsers uh, i uh, mozilla or uh, uh, chrome then we can pass a browser name from testng.xml using these parameters okay parameters annotation and this is uh, yeah username and password so i'll give you example of this one okay today and the parameters from testng.xml can be suite level or test level okay so we'll see today at test level and the the at the rate parameters annotation can be placed on any method that has at the rate test at the rate before or after test or factory annotation so this factory annotation will discuss later on when we uh, talk about page object model going forward okay and these are the different limitations of at the rate uh, parameters so we'll discuss later on okay so this is the class we have been using in last few sessions okay uh, test class okay so i have removed few of the methods from here i kept only this before method uh, this setup method to launch the browser and navigate to this url orange hrm and uh, uh, this is the test method to log in into the application okay by providing a username and password and clicking on login button so user will be uh, getting login into the application okay and the last one is tear down so closing the browser okay so i kept only three test cases uh, three test methods here so here you can see we have this login test okay and here we have provided username and password and these values are hard coded here okay uh, we have we are providing using selenium script so using send keys method okay so these are hard coded values so so this is not recommended actually we should not write hard coded uh, we should not hard coded the values okay so how to uh, parameterize this okay how to pass the values from test ng dot xml file using at the rate parameters annotation okay 
so this is the syntax for uh, at the rate parameters okay so this is xml simple xml file where inside test uh, tag we are providing the parameter uh, we are we have included parameter tag and we are providing username and password here okay like one second like this oh, okay so this is how you can provide username this is the field name and this is the value username value okay and uh, yeah so at the test level what how we can configure at the rate parameters username and password so let's do that okay so first of all we have to give two string values as a parameter to this login test okay so how to do this so string you can give name like you name string password okay and simply we need to remove this uh, hard coded values so here we can give username and password we can give like this okay and here we can provide parameters tag okay here you can see username and password so here I'll give username comma in double quotes password uh, we should have this curly braces okay so this is how we can provide parameters annotation and here username and password now let me create xml file for this class so since this package has only one class so simply I'll create testng.xml so we have seen already in the last video how to create testng.xml convert to testng so this is my xml okay so I'll give let it be like testng.xml only so simply I'll click on finish so how we can provide the parameters from inside test tag okay so here you can see inside test tag we have parameters values so how to provide parameter what is the name username make sure this name of parameter should be same as this name okay so, so that it will take the value from XML file so here I'll give username what is the value admin and simply I'll copy and paste it over here for for password and here go here this is password okay so we should have the same name as uh, uh, given in the at the rate parameters annotation in the XML as well okay so what is the password admin one two three so this is ready now so here we have provided two parameters username and password and uh, we are capturing using at the rate annotation at the rate parameters annotation username and password and passing these to this login test method now simply I'll run this testng xml run as testng suite browser is launched it will navigate to orange hrm and simply providing the username and password and it will log out from application okay so here you can see uh, one test run total test run one passes one failure zero okay here you can also see that values admin admin one two three so this is how you can provide username uh, sorry parameters from testng.xml using at the rate parameters annotation okay now we'll see what are the limitations of this at the rate parameters 
so parameters value in test in the xml and values in at the rate parameters cannot be different so what it says so here we are taking a string as parameters right and we are providing uh, a string from here so we cannot have different uh, uh, data type over here okay so that will give an exception okay so what is the second one your at the rate parameter do not have a corresponding name in test ng xml use optional at the rate optional at the rate optional annotation i'll show you what is the usage of this optional okay so what it says your parameter at the rate parameters do not have a corresponding name in test ng dot xml so take an example here we have username and password and if you have if you have password one over here okay so definitely this will fail the test case okay so i'll try to run this because this parameter has different name in test uh, test ng xml okay here we have password and in xml we have password one so i'll run this here you can see uh, what is the error at the rate test uh, see what is required parameter is required at the rate test on method login test but has not been marked at the rate optional okay so the parameter is required it says so how to resolve this so we have an option called at the rate optional so using that we can uh, resolve this so how to do that so here we have for password we have different values right in the parameter so at the rate pass what is that optional sorry optional and in bracket you can provide what is the actual value what the value which you are going to pass that so here you can uh, resolve this issue like this okay for admin one two three so let me rerun this second browser is launched navigated to orange hrm entered admin and password here you can see successfully executed okay so this is how you can uh, execute a use this is the usage of optional and what is the next you cannot test multiple values of the same parameter using test ng.xml okay so suppose you want to test for multiple set of values like uh, this time i have provided admin and admin 123 suppose you want to test for using the same test you want to test for some other values so this is not possible using at the rate parameters or from this xml okay so how to do this okay so for that we have next method uh, passing parameters with data providers okay so what is data providers so when you need to pass complex parameters or parameters that need to be created from uh, objects read from property file or database or excel sheet okay so we can use data providers in such cases okay so at the rate parameters is for uh, for less or you can say when we have uh, limited data sets and uh, at the rate data provider is for for complex scenarios when we use uh, when we when we have to read the data from database or excel sheet okay in that case we can use data providers a data provider is a method annotated with at the rate data provider okay and at the rate data provider annotation has only one string attribute here i have given the syntax so a data provider is a method annotated with at the rate data provider here you can see and this is the method 
okay and it has one value it has one string attribute okay so this is the attribute name its name so this is the name of data provider if the name is not supplied the data provider's name automatically defaults to the method's name okay we'll see that and a data provider returns an array of objects so basically it returns 2d array objects and here you can see we have uh, 2d objects uh, array of objects okay and uh, yeah so one one array is for uh, uh, data set and another is one another is for values okay so or in other words i would say and rows and columns okay this is for row and this is for columns similar like that okay so how to implement this okay let's do that what i'll do i'll create this class again i don't want to disturb this so we'll manipulate we'll update in the next other class so copy this I'll put it over here only and uh, I'll remove at the red parameters now uh, let it be username and password same the parameters and uh, yeah that's it so we have to create data providers method first so I'll create this method so simply I copy paste it okay here and let's say this is instead of username one I'll provide admin and here admin one two three admin let's say second set set of data be the same so that will get success for the second set of data as well admin one two three and third let it be like this third set of data okay the method name is login credentials and here we have given data provider name as test1 okay and how to pass these values to uh, this test method okay so here we have data provider just remember that it should start from data provider so automatically it will give when you write data okay data provider and here we have to give name like test1 so guys going forward I'll show you like how to get the data from excel sheet and how to get uh, using uh, in this method okay data provider, ma uh, data provider method and uh, how to pass those values in our test script so this is ready now so I'll run this okay and let's uh, instead of creating the XML let me run from here only browser is launched now it will enter the first admin user and password second time it will enter those username and password now third time it will fail because those are invalid credentials okay so here you can see in the results login test and this is first set of test data admin admin123 this second set of test data admin admin123 and this is third is uh, data provider mismatch so let me give yeah here values are I'll give in a string 
let's say admin and I'll provide wrong password yeah so you can give number of values here okay so here I'm I have provided three set set of data three sets of data over, over here okay and third is wrong password so let's rerun this This is the third time and it will enter yeah you can see three test cases two passed one fail and if you see yeah here you can see this is one set of tested test data admin admin one two three admin admin one two three this is also passed and this is the third one admin admin one two three four five okay so this is how you can use data providers in your uh, test and one point what it says if name is not supplied so let's remove the name from here like this okay so we have to give uh, yeah let me try to run this whether it will work or not I think yeah let me run this first yeah it fails because yeah what it says requires a data provider named okay so what we can do so if you don't do not give any name over here then we have to give this method name so here we have to provide the method name so hopefully it should work this time let's see this yeah here we go browser is launched navigate it to orange hrm and entered first username and password this is the second time it is getting executed and this is the third time third sets of data okay so this is how you can work with data providers uh, if you don't have a data provider name over here then you have to provide the data provider method name okay over here okay and yeah and going forward i'll create like how to read excel file from data providers okay and how to supply to your uh, test scripts we'll see that uh, when we talk about page object model and uh, we'll see when we parameterize our test when we create the framework at that time i'll show you how to read the excel file and all okay so this is how you can pass values from parameterize uh, the test from uh, test ng uh, using two ways so we have seen parameters annotation at the red parameters annotation and data provider okay so thank you guys for watching have a nice day Bye bye. Hello friends, welcome back to automationtestingsider.com. So this is the sixth video of Test NG framework series, and today we are going to discuss about parallel testing in Test NG. So let's understand what is a thread or what is multi-threading programming. So Java provides built-in support for multi-threaded programming. A multi-threaded program contains two or more parts that can run concurrently. Okay. 
and each part of such program is called a thread and each thread defines a separate path of execution so let me give you an example so in selenium con context let me give you an example so suppose you have 100 test cases in your uh, script in your project okay and you want to run those 100 test cases on chrome browser as well as firefox browser so if you run your test cases sequ uh, sequentially then it will take a lot of time right first if you run on chrome browser and later on on firefox browser definitely it will take a lot of time so what you'll do you'll apply parallel testing and uh, this is the path of execution of chrome browser and there would be separate path of execution of of firefox browser so we can say this is uh, this is uh, thread 1 and this is thread 2 this is just an example okay so here we have uh, written like uh, each part of such program is called a thread and each thread defines a separate path of execution so there would be separate path of execution for this chrome test and there would be separate path of execution of firefox browser okay firefox test and this is the definition of parallel testing so parallelism or multi threading in software terms is defined as the ability of the software operating system or program to execute multiple parts of multiple parts or sub components of another program simultaneously okay so what are the different benefits of having parallel testing so reduce uh, it reduces execution time so as we have discussed in uh, the example okay so if you run concurrently two test cases two threads definitely it will reduce the time okay so as tests are executed in parallel multiple tests get executed simultaneously hence reducing the overall time taken to execute the test cases okay and uh, the second one is allows multi-threaded test okay so it will allow us to uh, verify multi-threading programming concept in our script okay and uh, what are the different situations uh, because of that we are uh, going to use multi uh, we are going to use parallel testing okay so there are situations where you want to run multiple tests at the same time okay so let's discuss situation one if you have 100 test cases and running these 100 test cases sequ uh, sequentially will take you magnitudes of time longer because you can only execute one test at a time okay and yeah i have given that example earlier for cross browser testing so another uh, situation would be cross browser testing if there are more number of scripts to be executed and executing them on each and every browser sequentially is time consuming so these are the two situations one is if you have multiple test cases like 100 test cases or more than that in your project okay and running these 100 test cases or 1000 test cases sequentially will take definitely a lot of time so you can divide you can uh, run them parallelly to reduce the execution time okay another thing is cross browser uh, testing with which we have uh, discussed earlier so the above situations can be avoided using a concept in selenium called parallel execution okay so we can reduce the execution time as tests are executed simultaneously in different threads so in test engine we can achieve parallel execution by two ways so what are those uh, two ways so with testng.xml file and there is an attribute called parallel attribute of suite tag so in suite tag we can provide parallel attribute okay so this is the syntax of parallel attribute parallel is equal to methods okay so the parallel attribute of suite tag can accept four values so we have methods classes test instances okay so we can run our methods parallelly if you provide methods we can run uh, classes parallelly test parallelly and instances parallelly okay and the second method is we can configure an independent test method to run in multiple threads so we'll discuss i'll give you demo of uh, these two uh, ways okay so this is simple xml 
with a parallel attribute here you can see inside suite tag this is the name of suite and uh, this is parallel here we have given methods so whatever method are available inside this class okay this is my class name class b inside this package so this package name and this is class so whatever methods are there inside this uh, class this class b will be uh, will run parallelly okay if you provide parallel is equal to methods now let's understand with the help of program so eclipse is already open here so here i'll create new project java project so i'll give name parallel testing demo i'll click on finish i need to add a configure build path so we have to add library test ng library click on finish apply and apply and close second we have to configure build path for uh, external jars selenium java jar files so just add them in your uh, script in your uh, project apply apply and close okay and here i'll create a new package com com dot parallel demo com dot parallel demo click on finish here i'll create a new class let's say class a and uh, inside this class let me have uh, one method public void let's say test case 1 test case 1 and uh, here simply I'll give print statement this is test case 1 okay and uh, I'll provide at the rate annotation here. And let's have another method in the same class. I'll give name test case 2 and here as well test case 2. Okay. So I have created a class, class A. Inside that I have two test methods test case 1 and test case okay now what we'll do we'll create test ng xml file first let's see this one example of uh, having methods we'll run our test cases parallelly uh, i mean we'll execute methods parallelly okay so how to do that so simply right click on this class and uh, last in, in the last video we have seen how to convert into test ng.xml so if you right click we are, here we have an option test ng and convert to test ng so so here the location will come so this is our project location and uh, test ng.xml so test ng here i'll give test ng method so we'll understand uh, we are going to run parallelly by methods okay and this is suite name test name and here we have class selections so you can select packages here or classes okay let it be like classes and parallel mode so here if you select methods so here it will come by default in inside suite tag parallel okay it's equal to methods if you select classes so classes will come and test will come so let me just select methods and here you can give thread count as well so for now we are not giving a thread count okay uh, we'll run, uh, we'll add that manually so let me just click on finish so here you can see one test ng xml is created now what i'll do inside this one we don't need thread count inside test tag 
so simply I'll remove all these and uh, here we have in suite tag we have parallel is equal to methods okay and this is our test name so this is simple XML file so I can run this okay so let me just run this run as test ng suite here we go so we have two test cases okay two methods and these are the uh, we have given some print statement but how to understand whether they, uh, they are running parallelly or not okay so what we can do here we can give in thread class we have a current thread method inside that we have get id so we'll that will get the id of the thread okay and similarly we'll give that command over here as well current thread dot get you have different uh, methods so you can get the name of the thre thread using get name method okay for now let's say get id now let's rerun this again So here we go. So since I have not written any scripts, Selenium scripts inside, so so this is the ID of the thread 11 and 12. So you can see these two are running parallelly in different threads. So 11 and 12. Another thing what you can do is here you can give uh, here you can give thread count as well. Thread count. So number of threads you want to execute you can give like two okay so one second why it is okay we have to give in double quotes double quotation okay and it will give you the same results here you can see now how do you understand whether uh, they are running Im even uh, it it uh, gives ids okay 11 and 12 but we need to understand whether uh, they are running parallelly or not so what i'll do i'll run uh, i'll add some selenium scripts inside this so in previous class we have some selenium script so let me just copy paste side So simply I'll copy few lines of code from previous class to launch the browser. Let's remove this one and uh, yeah, no need of this one as well. And here we have to declare our uh, web driver. Uh, let me give my blog URL here this link and uh, simply I'll copy a few these line of lines of code in the next method as well second method okay and we'll understand uh, whether it is running parallelly or not and instead of automation testing insider I'll give another URL uh, this orange hrm url i'll give in the next method okay now my tests are ready two test cases okay and uh, let me just run this parallelly where we have Parallel testing demo. This is our testng XML. So run as a testng suite. So you can see two browsers appeared simultaneously. Okay, so let it run. And once it is done, I'll show you. So here you can see. 
parallel to browser uh, are open okay uh, in one browser automation testing insider.com url navigated and another one is orange hrm application opened okay so this is how you can do parallel testing by methods and uh, what is next so let's have a look classes wise so what i'll do i'll create some more classes inside this so let's say class b finish and uh, i'll do class c okay so we have two more classes class b and class c and inside that let's have uh, some methods so i'll copy these lines of code i have one method and we have to give let's say this is test case let let it be like test case one only and uh, in class so this is class b i'll copy this and uh, i'll paste it inside class c okay and i'll give method 2 here method 2 so what i have done i have created two more classes class b and c so here we have uh, one method test method test case 1 and inside class c we have another method test case 2 so let's run these two classes parallelly so how to do that just select these two classes and right click we have test ng convert to test ng so here you can see this default xml is uh, showing here right so class name you can see com dot parallel demo dot class c now here what we can do i'll just change the name this is uh, uh, classes wise okay and parallel mode i'll give classes here okay and uh, yeah so click on finish another xml is getting created so here we got one more xml test ng classes dot xml these are two these are uh, my classes and uh, what i'll do i'll remove thread count from test these are not required for now and inside suite tag we can give okay parallel is equal to classes so thread count is optional by default it will take okay if you want to specify you can give thread count let's say you want through two threads okay now it is done let me run this here we go we have two methods inside uh, uh, these two classes class c class b and c right class b and c we have two one one method in each class okay so here we go these are the ids of threads okay and if you can see here here we have this is class b and this is class c so these two are running parallelly these two classes if you want to add more tests here you can add this let's see let's say this is uh, one second let it let's add here first this is test case 2 and uh, inside class c this is 3 and let's say this is fourth test case sorry this is third test case 3 so we have four test cases in class b two test cases and class c two more test cases let me rerun this again so four test cases will be seen here 
okay in console you can see so there are two threads only we have seen so these are the two threads 11 and 12 okay for test cases for pass failure 0 skip 0 this is how you can run parallelly using parallel is equal to classes okay now what is next using test okay now what I'll do uh, let's create one more class and uh, I'll give or uh, let's do one thing so we have two classes B and C right and simply I'll copy this one classes wise and put it over here and paste it instead of classes I'll give test now we have another XML and instead of classes here parallel is good to classes I'll give test here okay and uh, what I'll do inside suite tag will have two more test okay couple of test suites so what I'll do simply I'll copy this is my test one and this is test two and let's have one class in each test class C in this test and class B in this one the first test okay so this is using parallel is equal to test thread count 2 and here I have given test 1 and test 2 so let me run this some error occurred yeah two tests in the same suite cannot have the name test okay so I forgot to change the name so you cannot have the same name same test name in inside a suite okay so you have to give the name this is test 1 and let's say this is test 2 okay and I'll run it parallelly what is giving how many methods we have four but here it is showing two only let me rerun this yeah here we go so now tests are running parallelly so there are two threads 11 and 12 and four test cases four passed and if you see the reports test ng output email label report so here we go we have two tests test 1 and test 2 four test cases okay and these are the test method inside c class and class b okay test 1 and test 2 test 3 and test 4 so using this one we can run our test cases parallelly so parallel is equal to test okay and uh, what is next the last one is instances okay so what I'll do I'll create a simple one more class let's say class D and inside D let's have test method public void test case 1 and simply I'll copy this print statement and let's say this is test case 1 ok so suppose uh, let me give an example of this instances in this XML only 
classes only okay so you have two classes and instead of classes I'll give what I'll do let's use class D only okay better to use class D so I'll use another test case test 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 case 2 and here test case 2 and simply I'll create XML for this class D test ng convert to test ng and uh, let it be like this and here I'll give name instances so using instances what you can do first let's, let's delete this thread count and here parallel is equal to you can give instances and uh, let's say thread count count is equal to 2 and uh, let me run this instances okay let's see what will happen so we have two methods inside uh, class D those are running in different threads 11 and 12 so now using these instances what you can do is inside this test you can define one attribute called group by instances instances and you can give value here true group by instances right group by instances is equal to true okay now let's see what will happen so here you can see so the moment when I have given this group by instance is equal to true it is running in same thread here you can see 11 11 right even though we have given thread count is equal to 2 so here we have given one attribute called group by instances so suppose you want to execute your uh, test cases in same thread then you can give in same instance you can give group by instances is equal to true okay and you can execute your uh, test cases in though you have different thread counts okay different threaded uh, though you have different threads but if you want to execute in the same instance then you can give parallel is equal to instances and here you can give group by instances equal to true so this is how it will work and uh, what is next we can configure an independent test method to run in multiple threads okay so how to do that so suppose you have separate test method let's create one more class class D where D is already there E and uh, click on finish so suppose here we have one method public void test method 1 and uh, yeah copy this command from here okay and uh, suppose you want to run so there are two ways to run uh, parallel testing in test ng right so one with test uh, using xml file test ng dot xml we have seen different uh, attributes uh, within I mean different values using methods classes test and instances now this is the second way we can configure an independent test method to run in multiple threads so what you can do suppose you want to run this test method in multi uh, in, in parallel way okay so how to do that here we have different attributes attributes so here we have thread pool size so let's say 3 
so number of threads is 3 and uh, comma is not required and another thing is invocation count invocation count why it is not coming one second here we have to give double quote 3 and invocation count why it is not coming I think we need comma yeah invocation count uh, let's say we want three times okay and there is a uh, another attribute called timeout so you can define like thousands so we using this time it will execute so double quote is not required here yeah so thousand milliseconds okay and within that time it will it should execute the test cases so let me run this run as a test ng test so you can see here three test cases passed okay here we go 1 11 12 and 13 so these are the threads so for particular method you can define the thread size like thread pull size three threads and invocation count suppose you want to run your test case three times so uh, this this method is running in three different threads 11 12 and 13 and uh, let's say suppose you have uh, thread pool size is 2 only and suppose you want to execute three times your test case to be run okay so what you'll do run as test ng test we'll see what happens okay so here you can see this thread number 12 is uh, distributed among uh, i mean this test case running on this thread 12 and uh, there is a separate test case i mean this test case is running separately on this thread 11 okay so since we have only two threads right 12 11 and 12 so this is how it runs here you can see test method 1 1 1 okay so we run it uh, three times so this is how we can do parallel testing using test ng so if you have any doubts guys please uh, give your comments and uh, in the next video we'll talk about cross browser testing in test ng so please like this video and uh, subscribe my channel and click on bell icon to get the notification for upcoming videos thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to automation testing insider.com so this is the seventh part of test ng framework series and uh, today we are going to talk about cross browser testing in selenium web driver using test ng so this is the agenda for today so we'll talk about what is cross browser testing why do we need cross browser testing and uh, how to achieve cross browser in selenium web driver and how to execute a script in selenium web driver okay and uh, at last we'll talk about how to execute test cases in multiple browser in parallel mode so let's get started with some theoretical stuff like what do you mean by cross browser testing so cross browser testing is a type of functional testing where we need to check or we have to check a web application uh, whether our web application is working as expected in different browsers and uh, the question comes in mind that uh, why do we need cross browser testing so there are a uh, few reasons so a web application can be opened in any web browser by end user for example some people prefer to open in firefox uh, some may prefer in chrome or some may prefer in ie IE. So generally right now we are using in chrome browser i mean most of the people are using chrome browser nowadays but uh, in certain situations we have to test our web application on different browsers as well so we need to ensure that web application will work as expected in all popular browsers so that more po more people can access access it and use it okay so sometimes we may 
face some kind of issues like font size issues or css html differences in different browsers or uh, kind of page alignment so these are the different uh, uh, reasons we are uh, uh, doing cross browser testing okay so how to achieve cross browser in selenium so to execute test cases with different browsers in the same machine at same time we can integrate test ng framework with selenium web driver okay so my eclipse is already opened here so here i'll create new project cross browser demo and uh, here i'll add test ng library apply apply and close and uh, i'll add uh, selenium java jar files Now here I'll create a new package com dot cross browser cross browser test click on finish here I'll create a class called cross browser testing uh, or cross browser demo I'll click on finish so what I'll do, I'll create a simple test case here and uh, we'll see uh, how it execute, how we are going to execute in uh, this test case in different browser. Okay. So here I'll create new let's say launch app. So this is I'm going to create one method okay launch app and uh, here I'll give test annotation so this is my test method we have to import at the test annotation from test ng dot annotations dot test org dot test ng dot annotations dot test okay so this is uh, done now here what we'll do We'll write some if condition, okay? If and I'll pass parameter like uh, browser, okay? Browser and if browser equal ignore case, we have a string method equal ignore case. Let's say Chrome, okay? Then uh, piece of code will be executed. And here we'll pass parameters. Let's say browser. We'll pass these parameters from uh, testng.xml. So let's say I'll give name browser. And here I have already uh, have this uh, web driver path. Okay, uh, particular driver path for all the browsers. So simply I'll copy paste. Let's say for Chrome we have this one to set the property of a particular driver. So what I'm going to do here is and here we'll declare our web driver web driver driver and uh, yeah we have to import Chrome driver for uh, Chrome, Chrome driver from org.openq.selenium.chrome so simply what I'm doing here is I'm creating a session on Chrome browser okay Chrome driver by creating the object of Chrome driver okay here this is the just to set the path of Chrome driver here you can see this uh, this one parameter webdriver.chrome.driver and this is the path of my Chrome driver so similarly we'll write uh, if conditions for uh, I would say if I pass the parameter browser as Chrome 
then it will execute this piece of code if not if it is a different browser then this piece of code will be executed else if browser dot equal ignore case and here I'll give Firefox Firefox okay and here also I'll write couple of piece of code to launch the browser what we have this is for Firefox and we have to import Firefox driver from org.openq.selenium.firefox and at last I'll do it for else if browser dot equal ignore case sorry browser dot what happened else if browser dot equal ignore case here I'll give I and simply I'll put this piece of code to launch the I browser okay so this is what we have written we have to import Internet Explorer driver from org.openq.selenium.i so this is done and after that uh, will driver dot manage will maximize the window dot maximize okay and let's say driver dot get here we'll put some URL here I have my blog URL okay so this is how we have uh, written the test cases test case okay simple test case to launch app here we are not validating anything but simply we are uh, uh, launching the app this application automation testing .com, in different browser we are checking the browser okay if it is if we pass browser as Chrome then it will execute this piece of code and after that it won't execute this uh, on Firefox and I in, in jump it jump to this piece of code okay driver.manage.window.maximize and then it will navigate to this URL similarly if we get browser as uh, some other other than Chrome like Firefox or I then it will execute accordingly okay so our test case is ready here and what I'll do yeah this is done and uh, we'll create test in the XML to pass the parameter okay so simply right click test ng convert to test ng so here this is the location of XML and uh, suite name as suite test name I'll uh, keep it as uh, test only here we have if you want to select class selection classes or packages so I'll go with classes and parallel mode so right now let it be like this only so click on finish so here my test ng.xml created here I'll remove this thread count okay so here I have uh, this test ng.xml and inside test tag we have uh, classes so we have to include our classes here and class what is the class name and we have to give complete path like uh, first of all we have to give package name dot what is the class name we have this cross browser demo this is the class name what is giving error okay now it is fine 
so this is uh, my XML file is ready now we have to add parameters here so there is a tag called parameter and here we have to give we have to pass the name so make sure that you should have the same name what we have given in your test case parameters so this is browser so it should be browser here as well okay and value let's say chrome first okay and uh, it will execute this class okay so xml is ready so let me just run this for chrome browser whether it is working or not so my class is already ready everything is fine let's run this so i'll run either you can run from here or you can right click on test in xml and run as browser is launched chrome browser navigated to url automation testing insider.com i think test case is executed we have not closed the browser at the end so here you can see total test run one pass one and here you can see chrome on chrome browser okay and what i'll do i'll close the browser at the end so driver dot close but before that let's put some wait thread dot sleep let's say two seconds of wait we have to add a throws declaration either we have to catch the exception or throws declaration now what i'll do last time we have run on chrome browser so this time let's say firefox firefox whether it is working or not so hopefully this will execute on firefox browser this time around so firefox browser is launched it will take some time and uh, yeah it is navigating to automation testing uh, insider.com and uh, close the browser after a couple of seconds yeah here we go now we can see the result firefox and console total test run 1 failure 0 skip 0 and if you want to see the reports so you can see like this test output and emailable report so here you can see only one test launch app this is the test case test method and here you can see the parameter the parameter which we have passed firefox okay now you want to execute this test case on different browser the same, same test case on different browser so how to do that so what i'll do i'll simply i'll copy this test and uh, we'll create separate test case in xml file separate test in xml okay so here we go now we have to give a test name uh, unique test name okay so this is firefox so let's say give firefox test firefox test this is chrome test and uh, yeah here we have to give chrome and last i test and here we have we have to give i now we are not uh, running this on parallel mode so simply we'll run one by one first and then we'll see at last how we can run on parallel mode okay so right now i'm running separately uh, one by one firefox first on firefox later chrome and i so let's run this this is our testng.xml run as testng suite
first it is running on Firefox browser navigate it to URL and uh, after a couple of seconds it will close the browser second it will run on uh, Chrome browser here you can see Chrome browser is launched and third it will run on i browser here you can see i browser and it will close the browser after running the test case after a couple of seconds here you can see so we have executed three test cases three pass failure zero and if you want to check the reports so let me just show you uh, where is that test output so here we have you can see three tests we have and uh, yeah these are the method uh, test method launch app launch app you can see and uh, yeah three test and here you can see parameters so Firefox parameter we have passed from test XML Chrome and I so this is how you can execute test cases on different browsers now you can run this test case in parallel mode as well as we have seen in the last video about parallel testing so simply you have to give here uh, one parameter parallel attribute and here we have to give we have to give test so it will execute all the test cases in parallel mode now let's clean this and this as well here you can execute in parallel mode So here you can see all three browsers launched, i.e. Firefox and Chrome, and it will execute the test case in parallel mode. here you can see the same results you will get three test cases three passes failure zero and if you see the reports you will get the same results here as well chrome test i test firefox and uh, yeah these are the parameters we have sent okay and uh, yeah so this is all about today's session and uh, let me just recap so we have created one test case simple test case cross browser demo this is the class and uh, uh, I have set parameters browser from which uh, from where uh, I mean from test XML we are passing the browser parameter inside test tag you can see inside test tag we have this parameter sorry here we have and uh, yeah so using if else condition we are checking what is the parameter so if it is like chrome then it will execute this piece of code and after that it will jump jump to here and it will execute it will navigate to this URL and close the browser at the end okay similarly if we get some uh, other names other browsers like Firefox or I then it will execute accordingly okay 
so this is about browser, uh, cross browser testing today so thank you guys for watching have a nice day bye bye hello friends welcome back to automation testing insider.com so this is the eighth part of test ng framework series and today we are going to talk about how to run failed test cases using test ng in selenium web driver so this is very uh, important topic and uh, very basic problem as well like why we are getting test failure and uh, yeah let me give you an example suppose you have 200 test cases in your uh, project and out of 200 uh, 180 got passed and 20 case test cases are failing okay so we need to as an automation engineer we have to analyze the results and uh, that is our responsibility and we have to come up with the solution as well to rerun those failed test cases okay to rerun those scripts for failed test cases so today we're, we are going to discuss about these two points like uh, uh, why we are uh, getting test failure and uh, how to rerun our uh, test scripts for failed test cases okay so let's get started so the first point is uh, we'll discuss that uh, why our test cases are failing so the reason could be anything so here i have listed down few points so the first point is application failure so sometimes when we are not getting expected output okay as per the functionality then our test cases are getting failed so that is a uh, straightforward defect so, uh, i mean if uh, your uh, application is not working as expected then definitely that is a failure of application right i mean that is an issue so you can uh, straightforward you can raise a defect for that and uh, second point could be network issue uh, so sometimes your internet is not working your uh, wi-fi got disconnected uh, because of your LAN issue etc so these are the different reasons for your uh, test failure and third point is server is not responding okay and uh, sometimes a scripting issue so let's say your uh, uh, because of the new functionality your locator got changed and you forgot to update the uh, you forgot to update your script so because of that you may get a uh, failure uh, definitely you'll get the your uh, test cases will be failed okay and uh, uh, fifth one is application is down this is another reason and the last but not the least is browser or browser driver issue okay so let's say your browser driver is not updated so because of that you may face problem okay so these are the different reasons uh, because of that your test cases will be uh, are getting failed okay and uh, how to run how to execute failed test cases uh, the next topic okay so we can execute failed test cases using two methods so the first one is by running test ng hyphen fail dot xml i'll show you how to run this and the second one is by implementing test ng i retry analyzer interface okay so these are the two methods by which we can rerun our test cases failed test cases okay so my eclipse is already opened here so here i'll create new project let's say test ng demo uh, it and uh, what i'll do I have to build path we have to add the library test ng library apply apply and close again right click to configure your uh, selenium java jar files add external jars so inside lips folder we have a few jar files and again click on uh, that and outside of the lips folder we have couple of more jar files we have to import all of them apply apply and close <coughs> now our project is ready here I'll create a new package let's say run fail test cases let's say one 
and let's say com dot click on finish here I'll create a class let's say class A and uh, here I'll write few methods public void test case 1 simply I'm writing print statement uh, this is this is test case 1 and I'll add annotation here simply I'll copy paste and I'll create another test case another test method test case 2 this is test case 2 and let's put some assertion so that we can fail our test case so in a set class we have assert true assert true and uh, yeah here we can give fail or pass true or false okay simply copy paste for test case 2 so this is class a that is ready now i'll create another class let's say class b and simply i'll copy paste the test methods and i'll rename rename those i'll i would say test case 3 and this would be test case 4 so we have four test cases in two classes okay and let's say some of our test cases are failing let's say test case 2 is getting failed so i'll give false here so let me run this so that i can show you it is getting failed so here you can see two test run one failure zero escape so here you can see this test case is getting failed <coughs> i'm sorry assertion error expected true but found false okay so what i'm going to do now and uh, yeah, this is done let's create xml file so here we have test ng convert to test ng we have already seen earlier so it contains both of our classes class a and class b so simply i'll keep the sweet name test name as it is and I'll click on finish so our test ng XML is ready let's remove this thread count and simply what I'll do I'll run this script uh, sorry this XML file okay so run as test ng suite now we can see we have four test cases okay total test run 4 failure 1 so these are our test cases test cases 1 2 3 4 and if you see the results here test case 2 is getting failed because of assertion error expected true but found false okay now i'll show you when you run your uh, xml then you just refresh this project and this output test output file uh, folder will be created automatically once you run your script okay so here if you expand that so here we have suite okay suite name as uh, suite so just expand this suite folder inside test output so here you can here you can see test ng hyphen fail dot xml so if you open that so here you can see that uh, method got added here okay so this is system generated uh, xml uh, so whenever we have test failure it automatically generates this xml here you can see suite uh, development suite name is failed suite and we have thread count uh, this you can ignore name is test failed 
inside this class class a okay we have test two method okay. so let me show you again by failing one more test case let's say this is also getting failed okay now rerun our uh, script again now this time around we got two failures okay two test cases are failed uh, if we just refresh the project and inside test output this test ng hyphen failed xml is already there so this is got updated so here you can see two test method included okay so suppose you want to run these two test cases again so what you can do you can just simply right click and you can run this test uh, xml file manually run as test ng suite so here you can see test case 1 and 2 is executed one more time okay failure so this xml is created uh, uh, by system okay so this is how you can run manually uh, your failed test cases but it would be very difficult to run failed test case right i mean uh, manually so how to do that so we can either we can create a, uh, either you can run this manually or you can create a library or i would say any runner file or class to execute this xml file so how to do that we have method in test ng uh, that is set test uh, suites uh, using that we can rerun our xml okay so how to do that i'll show you so simply what you can do is you can create another class here let's say fail test runner click on finish and here what i'll do i'll create one method public void uh, let's say run fail test cases okay inside this method what we'll do we have to create the object of test ng class okay let's say obg obj and uh, new test ng this is how you can create the object of test ng class now what you are going to do here we have to create one list i'll i'll tell you like why we are getting why we are creating a, a list let's say yeah, that a string type should be I mean a list type should be a string and let's say list or a list okay so we have created a list and uh, obj dot uh, set what is that matter sweet sorry set test suite suites so we have one method called set test suites so here we can provide the xml file okay in the form of a string okay so that's why i have created this list and uh, yeah before that we have to add uh, that xml okay so we have add method in list so here you'll we are going to add the path of that xml okay and we'll execute that uh, suite by this method so what is that xml uh, what is the path of uh, xml where is that output yeah output folder suite and simply click on shift and right click or simply right click yeah and properties here we have the path of this xml 
So simply put this XML path here and uh, hope everything is fine yeah and uh, we have to give this list over here okay and at last we have run method run method to run that suite okay so this is our run class is ready now what I'll do I'll put annotation here after test so according to your uh, project you can configure this so I am putting after test here and what I'll do I'll uh, recreate the XML again so that uh, test ng convert to test ng one second it is not I got refresh right click we have test ng convert to test ng why it is not getting in we'll add it manually click uh, already exist one second i'll add test ng1 xml and click on finish so we have to run our uh, third class as well this fail test runner so simply I'll copy run fail test cases sorry we have to copy this uh, class name right and we have to put class name over here so that automatically it will execute this runner class okay now yeah, let me just rerun now so we have to run this test ng XML only and automatically our uh, fail test cases will be executed so let me just rerun this yeah it is done now I'll show you here you can see fail suite this is already executed two test cases already executed re-executed okay two failures and before that we have suite uh, in which we have four test cases two got failed so this is the complete execution one two three four first got executed and after that uh, test case one and two re-executed because they are failed okay so this is how you can implement uh, the first method and now let's talk about uh, the second method by implementing test ng i retry by using i retry analyzer interface okay so for that what we'll do let's close all of all these okay and I'll create another uh, package method 2 okay and I'll create one class called uh, retry analyzer retry analyzer retry analyzer test I'll click on finish and uh, we'll implement one interface that is called I retry analyzer okay so this is an interface so interface to implement to be able to have a chance to retry a fail test so that's why we have implemented this method from our this retry analyzer test class okay and uh, there is a method in this interface so what is that method we have to uh, override that method so public void retry that method name and the return type of that method is uh, boolean boolean okay and uh, yeah, we have to add return statement this is fine and uh, there uh, we should have one parameter okay i test result uh, i test result class let's say result we have one parameter okay from i test result class and what i'll do here and before that let's put count to retry to implement retry logic so let's say 
we have one variable and initialize with zero first of all and uh, let's have another max count and I'll put three so suppose we want uh, three times to run our test case okay so that's why I put three let's put two for now okay and uh, here simply I'll give one if condition if count is less than max count okay it will go inside uh, the if condition if it is true okay and uh, simply I'll print some logic here uh, one statement here okay one second print ln what I'll print here is retrying I'll put some message okay retrying and uh, with this variable we have one in IT test result we have one method called get name so we'll get the name of the test case that will be re-executed okay and uh, I have to put plus sign over here and what I'll do here I'll give message again okay retrying this method name again this method test method again and again and count is here I'll put count plus one you can give in bracket so we'll get the proper message okay and uh, yeah semicolon is there so let me do one thing like this yeah now what I'll do and here I'll put count plus plus okay if count is less than this one then it will try uh, two times okay and it will come out uh, and here I'll put return true if it is true then it will uh, re-execute and uh, once it is failed this condition is failed then it will come out of this if condition and it will return false so this is uh, overridden method retry okay and we have implemented a here I retry analyzer interface okay now we have to implement this class inside our test method how to do that okay so let's say let me create separate class here okay let's say class A okay and uh, already we have created uh, for first method couple of classes so simply what I'll do don't confuse guys I have created I have given the same name here I should have given some different name but let's let it be like this no problem so simply I'll copy couple of classes couple of test methods from uh, class previous class okay and I put it over here and uh, yeah let's say this is getting failed and let's say this is getting fast okay so we have two test cases inside class A so yeah and how to implement okay how to re uh, how to re-execute our test fail test case using this retry logic okay so simply you can go to your uh, test class and you can give here retry there is an uh, there is a an attribute called retry analyzer and simply here you have to give the class name of uh, your retry analyzer class okay so you have to you can give like this class name dot class like this okay so this case will be re-executed the counter which we have given we have given two times so let's see this okay so you can here you can create the XML file for this class so right now I'm not creating I'm simply I'm running this class test class 
so run as a test ng test so let's see what is the output so this is assertion error okay so here you can see this is test case 1 okay and retrying test case 1 again and count is 1 so this is the first time uh, we have tried uh, this is test case 1 so this is the the first time okay and second time again we are trying okay and third time it got failed okay because we have given counter as 2 so first it will try a couple of times and third time definitely it will uh, it will be failed I mean uh, uh, as per uh, test case right it will execute once so two times will try for because of this our uh, because of our retry logic okay and uh, yeah this is test case 2 because test case 2 is passed so that's why this is one time so from here you can see easily so here you can see test case 1 try first time uh, again we got failure second time we got failure again and third time it the test case is failed finally after trying two times okay and test case 2 is successfully passed so this is how you can uh, use retry analyzer okay uh, in your test case but this is very tedious process because uh, in our test class you can see here I have provided uh, this uh, using this attribute right to provide our test class so this would be very hectic if you have 100 test cases or more than that so to avoid that what we can do is we can create another class and using test ng listener okay we can implement that so that it will be applicable for all your test cases suppose you have 100 test cases and we can configure uh, that listener in our XML and from there it will be executed okay it will take care of for uh, whatever test cases are getting failed it will take care of all those test cases okay it will execute based on your counter from that XML file so let's do that okay so what we are going to do is first of all just remove this from here and uh, I'll create another class in this method create listener class so what I'll do I'll create another class in the same package you can create in a separate package as well so retry listener class okay I'll create click on finish and this class will implement I annotation transformer one interface is called I annotation transformer and here we have to implement one method public void transform form method we have to implement already I have parameters and we have to set the parameters for that method uh, so this is the this is how we can set the parameter of this method as it is you can uh, set like that and why it is giving error method yeah and simply using this annotation we have to call one method that is set retry analyzer retry analyzer and uh, here we have to give our uh, retry analyzer class okay this class name we have to give so like this and we have to give simply class so this is done why we are getting error Public void we have to import yeah we have to import constructor from yeah, java dot lang dot reflect constructor and uh, method also we have to java dot lang dot reflect so yeah this is done so this is how our uh, retry listener class is ready now and what I'll do now, 
I'll create XML file for this class. Okay. So simply right click on this class and we have test ng convert to test ng and simply click on finish. One second, it is already exist. So we have to give some other name. Convert to test ng. I'll give test ng three. Click on finish. Open that because here we have to add listener, right? So, how to add that? Inside suite tag, we have listeners tag, and uh, here I'll add listener, and we have to give our class name. This class name, retry listener class, okay? And we have to give the complete path, guys. Uh, so we have method two, our package name, okay? So method to dot this one retry listener class so this is ready okay our xml is ready so what i have done let me just recap so first of all we have created a retry analyzer class to retry to implement the retry logic okay and uh, yeah uh, later on i have created listener class retry listener class that implements i annotation transformer interface okay and there we have one overridden method transform and simply we have called one method called set retry analyzer okay and in this xml we have to provide the our, uh, path of our listener class here we have to add uh, inside listener tag okay now we can run our test case yeah so in class a our uh, the test case this one is getting failed okay so it will run twice okay before it 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 will fail okay, so here we have given couple of uh, uh, count count as two so it will retry uh, for two times okay let me just rerun this so here you can see yeah so this test case one so by seeing the results here you can understand it tried this test case first time second time and third time it got failed and test is test case 2 is got executed successfully so since we have implemented this in uh, as part of uh, in our test ng xml okay uh, we have included listener so anyways we'll talk about listeners later on in the next video so here we have implemented this listener here so that's why we can uh, i mean implement this for any methods so let's say this is getting passed now and let's suppose test case 2 is getting failed now okay so let me rerun this test ng xml 3 again so here you can see now this time test case 2 getting failed first time it retry it tried for the first time second time and third time it got failed okay so this is all about today guys uh, so in the next video i'll talk about listeners in test ng so thank you for watching have a nice day bye bye Hello friends, welcome back to automationtestingsider.com. So this is the ninth video of TestNG framework series, and today we are going to talk about listeners in TestNG. So let's get started. So what is listener? So as the name suggests, listeners listen to the event defined in the Selenium script and behave accordingly. So based on your uh, test cases, uh, like test results, let's say test case passed, test uh, when test case is passed failed or skipped it behaves accordingly so listener is defined as interface that modifies the default test engine's behavior so basically listeners are nothing but interface okay that modifies the default test engine's behavior
okay and what is the purpose of having listeners so listeners are used in selenium to generate logs or customize test ng reports so this is the basic or uh, i would say the main funda behind having listeners to generate logs or having or customize the test ng reports okay so there are two types of listeners in automation in selenium automation so we have web driver listeners so whatever events that are triggered by web driver is taken care by web driver listeners and we have test ng listeners event triggered by test ng okay so today we'll focus on test ng test ng listeners and later on once we are done with our uh, test ng framework series and later on i'll explain web driver listeners so today mainly we'll focus on test ng listeners so these are the different test ng listeners are available interface available okay these are the different interfaces so we have i annotation transformer so we have already talked about i annotation transformer uh, listener we have used in the last video uh, when we have implemented a uh, retry logic to run the fail test cases okay and these are some different uh, listeners i annotation transformer 2 i configurable yeah so these are the different uh, listeners i reporter i suite listener uh, to uh, this is at suite level how to execute and uh, the most important is i test listener so today we'll see demo of this i test listener okay that is most important one so how to implement listeners in your script so there are two ways one is at class level we can implement and second one is suite level that is nothing but in test ng xml okay so we'll see both methods both ways we'll see we'll implement listeners in our script okay so my eclipse is already opened here so what i'll do i'll create new java project listener test ng and uh, i have to configure build path at test ng library we have to configure uh, selenium java jar files as well click on apply apply and close and here I'll create new package let's say com dot listener test ng listener click on finish and uh, Simply here I'll create listener class I'll click on finish and uh, since as I have uh, discussed like they are interface right so we'll use keyword implements implements and we are going to implement implements this i test listener so simply we have to write like i test listener here and as soon as we implement this interface it will give an error over here so let's see what are those errors okay so add unimplement method unimplemented methods okay so we have to simply uh, implement all those i mean we have to just uh, uh, click on this one add Im unimplemented methods in this class okay so you can see these are the different methods are added in this class okay so let's say this one on test start okay so this is one method and we have on test success so when our test case is passed based on that it will we can configure our code here okay so whenever we 
execute our test case okay when the test case starts we can configure some code over here or you can say some you can configure some logs here similarly we have on test success uh, the when test case is passed we can put some message over here on test failure so this is failure method this is skipped okay this is some on test failed but within success percentage so this is another method we have on start so when our test case uh, suite start or test starts then we can configure some messages uh, some uh, logs here okay on finish as well so let's implement one by one all these uh, methods okay so let's say and it has one parameter okay so i test result so this is the uh, variable of this i test result so according i mean using this one we can call some methods okay so i'll show you so simply we'll put some print statement i'll put message like test and a result dot we have different methods associated with i test result class so let's use this get name so we'll get the name of the test method okay test method test method and give some space and here what i'll do starts okay we can configure message uh, or log like this we can configure our logs like this okay test method it will get the name of the test method uh, by using this get name method and it will give beautiful method like test method let's say test case one starts like that like that okay so simply copy this one we can paste it over here this is for uh, success test case passed let's remove this one and here we'll put now this is for failure so here we can give failed okay we can configure logs or our customized message like this test method failed and yeah let's remove this as well and configure uh, skipped this particular test case is skipped what is this not required this one on start so this is while when our test starts we can configure this message test and uh, here we'll give context variable is context dot get name so test context dot get name starts regular test starts simply copy and put it over here test context dot get name ends okay so our listener class is ready now what i'll do i'll create another class so let's say i'll give name test class and click on finish here i'll write some test cases okay so let's write uh, public void test case 1 and uh, simply put statement so here i am not writing any selenium script okay so to understand better i am just giving one statement here so let's not put any comment so that we can see right uh, because we have already given uh, some or simply what i'll do yeah here i'll put 
some asset statement asset dot asset true let's say this is true so this is first test case I'll use at the rate annotation this is test case 1 similarly we have a uh, test case 2 let's say test case 3 as well and let's have one more test case test case 4 so we have four test cases let's say this is getting failed sorry false test case 3 is getting failed the first and second is passed okay based on this assert statement so if you provide false here then definitely it will fail and uh, uh, let's skip this test case so how to skip we'll put one attribute here depends on depends on methods and I'll put this method So since this is getting failed, so this will definitely will be skipped. Okay. So this is how we can configure our test class. So guys, uh, here I am not writing any Selenium script, so you can uh, use accordingly, like launch browser. Uh, you can test particular uh, according to your usage. Okay. So this is just for uh, explanation. Okay. Now this is ready. Now how to implement so there are two ways right so first way is at class level so how to implement this so at class level how to implement we have at the rate uh, listeners annotation and simply what we'll do we'll put inside a bracket we'll put the listener class name uh, like this and dot class okay so this is done so everything is done now let me just run this uh, test class okay let's see what happens so here you can see second test case 3 is failed 1 and 2 is passed and fourth one is uh, skipped okay so let's see console this is because of test ng failure uh, assertion failure so here you can see test case 1 starts so one second I have to give space over here like this okay let me rerun this test class so guys here you can see beautiful message the logs which we have uh, written in listeners class listener class this listener class okay so here you can see test default test starts why it is test starts in second test context this will get the name of the name of the this test okay name of the test okay so here you can see test method test case 1 starts test case 1 passed sorry we have to give space in each and every message like passed failed skipped starts Hands. Okay. Now let me rerun this. Now here you can see. Okay. So this default test because we have not configured any test name, so that's why it is giving default test starts. 
okay so that is this method I'll show you this one this one on start okay so this on start is for test method uh, sorry test for test okay and all others what we have configured is for test method so test method test case 1 starts test case 1 passed test case 3 starts test case 3 failed test case 2 starts test case 2 passed test case 4 skipped okay so this is beautiful uh, logs so we can easily uh, will come to know that uh, each case is uh, passed failed and skipped okay and at the end test default the I mean test default test ends default test is ends here and what we'll do what is the second method so the problem with this method is so let's say we have uh, more test classes more than one let's say you have a uh, uh, around uh, 20 to uh, 30 test classes okay so it would be difficult or uh, let's say 100 test classes so it would be very difficult to you know implement uh, this I mean this method everywhere right at the rate at the rate uh, listeners annotation each and every class so how to do that okay so that's why we have second method suite level so what I'll do let me create one more test class so that you can understand better test class 1 and click on finish simply from class test class I'll copy all these methods one second sorry yeah this class only test class 1 2 and I'll put it over here and let's say here we have a test case 4 how many test cases are there sorry 5 test case 6 let's say we have 2 test cases and test class 1 ok so here we have 2 test cases test case 5 and test case 6 and this test class we have four test cases now what I'll do I'll remove this listeners annotation from here at class level and will implement suite level so how to do that okay so simply what we are going to do you can select these two test classes and uh, we have uh, convert to test ng it's better to uh, have this listener class in separate package okay currently I have uh, added in the same package so it's better that is good approach when we have uh, this listener class in separate package okay. so here I'm going to create let's say I'll give name test suite and uh, let's say smoke test okay test fit smoke test let's see smoke sweet smoke test okay click on finish so here testng.xml is created so how to add listeners over here and this is always recommended approach guys uh, the second method is method is recommended approach okay so here what I'll give inside suite we have listeners tag and inside that listener we have listeners we have listener tag and here we'll we have to provide the class name of our uh, listener class okay so this is uh, and we have to give the complete uh, path package package name dot class name so where is that dot what is the class name listener class name listener class so simply I'll put it over here 
so this XML is ready I'll remove this thread count that is not required now let me run this XML okay so you either you can run from here or you can right click and you can run from here as well so simply I'll run this XML file and we'll see the results it is done now here you can see test smoke test starts and test smoke te test ends and these are the different logs test method test case one starts one three two two four is skipped five starts six so five and six belongs to class the second class right all uh, these like one to four one to four belongs to this test class we have two class test classes right test class and test class one so four methods are available in this test class and uh, two methods are available in test class one and we have configured our listener listener uh, listeners in test ng xml okay we have configured our li uh, listeners class listener class in test ng xml so that's why all got executed so here you can see test case 5 6 also so this is another view this is another class test class 1 and here you can see test class so there are four methods one is skipped and here we have two more two methods uh, they are passed so this is how you can implement uh, listeners in your script yeah so later on we'll discuss about web driver listeners as well and probably i'll uh, talk about i reporter as well listener and in the next video guys uh, we'll talk about uh, hard assertions and uh, soft assertions what is soft assertions and what is the difference between hard and uh, soft assertions we'll discuss in the next video so thank you for watching have a nice day and uh, if you're new to my channel then please subscribe it Thank you. Bye-bye. Hello friends. Welcome back to automation testing Saturday.com. So this is the 10th part of TestNG framework series. And today we are going to talk about assertions in TestNG. So basically we'll talk about hard assertion and soft assertion. And uh, we'll see the difference between them. And I'll give you demo of hard assertion and soft assertion. So let's get started. So what is an assertion? Okay. So assertion determines the state of the application whether it is the same what we are expecting or not. Okay. So basically assertion or validation points or checkpoints uh, determines the state of the application whether we are getting the correct output or not. Okay. We are whether we are getting the expected outcome or not. Okay. So validation are important part of testing. So until unless if you don't compare your uh, actual value with expected value then you don't know right whether your test case is pass or fail okay so assertion or uh, validation points or checkpoints are important part of testing without uh, validation points your uh, testing is of no use so whether you are doing manual testing or automation testing validation are important part okay so let me just give you a basic example so this is orange HRM application. So let me just log in. Admin and admin one two three. So here I logged in into orange HRM application. So what are the different things we can verify on uh, this application home page of this application right so first thing you can verify this orange HRM logo whether this logo is present here or not on home page right another thing is we logged in with user admin so you can verify this message welcome admin over here okay and uh, you can verify the page title view page source you can see the page title as orange HRM okay so 
that should be the expected value okay so whether we are getting the expected value or not so basically in validation we are comparing with uh, expected value whatever we are getting the actual value with expected value okay and another thing you can verify the url the url is correct or not okay and we can uh, verify these uh, different tabs over here whether these are uh, these uh, different tabs displayed on home page or not okay so these are the different uh, scenarios you can cover as part of your testing and you can put validation okay so that's why testing uh, validation are important part of your testing without validation if you if you don't validate your uh, cases then uh, there is no i mean there, there won't be any use of testing right so until unless if you don't compare your uh, actual result with expected will, uh, result then you don't know right whether test case is getting passed or failed okay so while testing selenium for automated testing of web application we need to add validation in our test script to report them as pass or fail okay and this is what we have discussed so far and assertions give you a way to test the conditions okay other than if else blocks so this is another way you can uh, verify your test with if if else but assertion are uh, most important or i would say recommended way okay so there are two types of assertion hard assertion and soft assertion so you might have heard a uh, most popular or frequently asked question uh, that is a uh, difference between assert and verify so assert is nothing but uh, hard assertion and verify is, is soft assertion okay now let's talk about hard assertion first and then we'll move towards soft assertion later on so what is hard assertion so it is default assert mechanism built into testng.org.testng.assert so uh, package right so it is available in org.testng package assert is the class okay we use it when a test has to stop immediately after the assertion fails i'll explain this uh, more uh, on this okay with more detail so hard assertion is an assertion that throws the assert exception when the test case is failed in the case of hard assertion you can handle the error by using a catch block like a java exception a hard assertion contains the following method so what is hard assertion so basically if you have five checkpoints in your test okay and take an example you are uh, yeah you are putting five assertion or you can say five checkpoints in your test five steps and take an example on second steps your assertion failed okay so the re, uh, execution will be stopped there so it won't execute the remaining part of your code or your test okay so this is hard assertion and these are the different methods available we have assert equals assert not equals assert true assert false assert null and assert not equal uh, these methods are available in soft assertions as well so sometimes we want to execute the whole script even if the assertion fails okay suppose we have 10 checkpoints in our test case which i have given the example take an example we are validating this home page and we have different scenarios to test right so we'll cover all these scenarios in one test case so let's have uh, 10 checkpoints in this one scenario in one test case and uh, yeah this is not possible in hard assertion right as we have discussed if our assertion fails at a third point or fourth step the remaining part of our code will not be executed okay so to overcome this problem we need to use a soft assertion in test ng that's what uh, soft assertion comes into picture okay so what is soft assertion it is custom assert mechanism supported by test ng's org.testng.asserts.soft assert okay so there is a class called soft assert package okay i mean this this is the complete package uh, this is the package and soft assert class we use it when a test has to continue execution even after the assertion fails in the sequence so as i have given the example let's say we have 10 steps in our test case and let's say our assertion fails at fourth or fifth point but still 
uh, will remain uh, will still execute the test cases the remaining part of uh, our uh, sequence okay in soft assertion when we use soft assertion soft assert does not throw an exception when an assert fails and would continue with the next step after the assert statement okay so it does not throw any exception unlike uh, uh, hard assertion okay now let me give you demo so my eclipse is already opened here so here i'll create new java project assertion demo click on finish right click build path and configure build path i'll add a test ng library click on finish i'll add a selenium java jar files as well click on apply apply and close here my project is created and uh, let me create one package here com dot version demo click on finish let's talk about hard assertion first so i'm creating a class creating an uh, creating a class called hard assertion demo and let's create test method over here so public void let's set test case 1 and i'll put some statements over here i'll provide at the red test annotation here uh, we have to import the org uh, test at the test annotation from org dot test ng dot annotations right dot test and here I'll put some statements let's say test start and simply I'll copy paste test and and here I'll put uh, one assert statement assert and assert true and here I'll provide false because this is expecting true okay if it is true then only this statement will uh, be passed okay but here we are providing deliberately we are filling the test case this assert statement right by providing false value here okay and uh, let's let put let's put some more comment let's say uh, give like this and simply i'll copy paste yeah so this is uh, test case one i'll create another test case this is test case number two and uh, yeah test 1 start here test 1 end test 2 start test 2 end okay my class is ready test class is ready so what i have done here i have created one test method so simply i put one assertion here and here we have another uh, test method so let me put it as true okay now let me run this so this is example of hard assertion so let me just run this now let's look at the results so here we got uh, assertion uh, error okay so here you can see test one is start okay second guys test one is start and since we got failure here so as part of uh, hard assertion it won't execute remaining two lines of code okay remaining part of this test method right so here you can see but it will jump to another test case 
the remaining test case because this is separate test method so that's why pointer comes here and it is start executing from beginning you can see it executes from uh, the beginning test to start test to end okay you can see the result test one failed because of assertion error expected true but found false because deliberately we have given false here so this is uh, hard assertion and suppose we want to execute remaining part of our test so how do we do that right so we have soft assertion what I'll do I'll copy the same class and put it over here and I'll just rename it I'll give soft assertion demo click on ok and I'll open this and initially what I'll do I have I'll create I'll delete this second test method and what I'll do and to use soft assertion we have to create the object of soft assert class okay so we'll create the object new soft assert yeah so this is how we have created the object of soft asset class and what I'll do I'll use that object and call method assert true okay and here I'll provide false okay now our soft assertion class is ready okay this class we have created the object of soft asset and here we have written some statements and we have, uh, we have we put one assertion over here okay soft assertion now let's run this class this program okay so here you can see uh, even though we have provided a false here okay this should fail right but but still uh, we can see our test case is passed right so that is the difference between hard assertion and soft assertion it it doesn't throw any exception okay so what we need to do because anyways because our test case is failed right so it should ideally it should give the error or exception okay here you can see test one is start one end and uh, successfully executed right so how to do this right so at the end of the statement and the another difference is yeah you can see here it executes all the lines of code from beginning till end right so how to validate whether it is passed or failed because ideally it should fail so we have one method called uh, assert all okay so that will validate whatever assertion whether it is failing or getting passed okay now let me just rerun this script Now here you can see, right? Test one start and and here you can see the following assert failed, expected true but found false. Okay, but the difference from hard assertion is that it executes all the lines of code. Here you can see test one start and end. Now let me have. Uh, what I'll do, I'll put one more other assert statement here. Object dot assert equal, and here I'll put hello, and here I'll put in capital letter. Okay, so we have two assert statements over here. Okay, and what I'll do, I'll create another test case I'll give test case 2 here and 2 this should be test 2 and let me pass this test case through here and simply I'll put hello as well okay now we have two test cases in first test cases what we have done we have two assert statements and both are getting failed now we'll see whether it will execute the remaining part of the execution and what would be the result okay so let me just rerun this program
so here you can see test to run failure to yeah we'll talk about that later on i'll show you first so here you can see test one start and test one end okay so first test case is executed and what are the assertion failed the following assert failed expected true but found false expected hello but found hello and you can see one difference we have two test cases right and another test case is passed already this one but why i mean this is uh, this is also failed right as per uh, here as per result you can see the second test case is also failed even though we have given correct statement over here you can see we have provided true so this should pass and here also assert equals we have given hello and hello here but still it is failed here so what is the reason okay. so the reason is since we are using the same object in all the all methods so that's why this test is getting failed okay so we have to use separate object for test cases okay so let me just create another object of soft asset class so here i'll give obj1 and uh, the obj1 obj1 and obj1 okay okay so since this object is uh, sharing both the test cases earlier so that's why uh, since the first test case is failed so ultimately the second case will also be failed because it is sharing the object now i have uh, created separate object for test case 2 that is obj1 okay now let me just rerun now here you can see guys the first test case is failed because of the assertion okay and second test case is passed successfully and uh, the first test case you can see we have two assertion we made uh, two statements over here right assert true false and this another assert equals using assert equals method so here it uh, it has given beautiful uh, I mean result the following assert failed expected true but found false expected hello but found hello now let me just pass both of them here you can give hi and here as well and instead of false you can provide true now here you can see it executes all part of uh, our test test one is start test one end test two is start test two end okay and we have two test cases both got passed so this is about uh, soft assertion and in the next video we'll talk about uh, maven maven tutorials we are going to start and in case if anything i have missed uh, as part of test ng tutorial then i'll cover uh, going forward but we are going to start maven tutorials from next video onwards and guys if you are new to my channel then please subscribe it and share this video and like it thank you so much have a nice day bye bye